Okay, we are back. I feel like I'm not sitting in my seat properly. There we go. Oh shit, I'm pressing the controller. My bad. Huh, I feel way better now. <laughs> Don't know what the song is, but it slaps. It's, um... It's... I can't remember which which fight music it is. I think it's Let the Battle Begin Remix from Final Fantasy VII Remake. So... I like it. They only use that- they only use that song once in that game, and you don't even get to listen to it that long. It makes me sad. It makes me so sad. But... It's gonna be- Wow, well, it's gonna be a while before- before we play, a uh, Final Fantasy Remake on this goddamn channel. Anyways, <clears throat> we'll get there one day. We'll definitely play it before, uh, <laughs> before Remake 2 comes out. But... <coughs> clear my throat. But thank you for waiting, guys. Alright, so, what the hell was I doing? Oh, yes, we lost our fucking... Our, uh... Ma Magatama, whatever the fuck it's called. Now we're heading to the park? This sexy bastard think of the other sexy bastard? <laughs> They'll get along. Oh my god. Oh, the fucking pigeons. So this is Vitamin Square. I get it. That's cool. I like it. How come we don't have cool things like this? Yeah, I see. I see where they get the name from now. The fruits scream vitamins to you. Hey, Nick. That guy right there. Isn't that the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? And that grouchy looking grandpa? He's throwing seeds out for the pigeons. Maya, he's not throwing seeds for them. He's throwing seeds at them. What the fuck? Oh man, you're making man, you're kind of making me uncomfortable. <laughs> you're really making me uncomfortable here. Uh, my my grumpiest threat level. What? My oh, grumpiest. My grumpiest threat level has just been raised to red. My grumpiness. What the fuck, dude? I don't even want to talk to him. What you saw? Um, excuse me. Would you mind if I had a word with you? Yes. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Oh. Oh. Oh, no. The world was not kind to you, was they? You make me really uncomfortable, man. <laughs> What's the matter with the- He looks like fucking, uh... Heat Miser? <laughs> you guys ever watch Frost Miser and Heat Miser? That's what they're called, right? Like the old Christmas specials? What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? Can't you see I'm fucking busy here? So you just don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? Eh? You take it. Great music, though. It's very, uh... Utilitarian, I guess. <laughs> He's really chucking those seeds at them. It's gotta hurt. Go on, eat this! Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you about Maggie Bird? I don't know any Maggie Bird. Yes, you do. Maggie, the waitress at Chinese Bean. It's a disgrace, I tell you. Another disgrace. A disgrace? An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Revealing? You mean her uniform? The youth of today, they don't know- they don't have any shame. No shame, I tell you. <laughs> Listen, man. If you think that's- if you think that's revealing, just be happy you don't live in this day and age. You know, you know what I'm saying? Dodging a couple of cases out here. <laughs> Love the Christmas special? Exactly. I haven't watched that in so long. Did anyone else get fucking terrified by the Yeti from the Rudolph Christmas special? Because that used to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> the youth of today, they don't have any shit. Oh, wait, I read that already. Whatever happened to the old Bushido values of Japan, like honor and modesty? What about me? I'm not wearing anything revealing. I don't know, Maya. You kind of have a short skirt. You? Your problem is you lack any sense of grace. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that too. That one's pretty obvious. Talk about hitting a girl where it hurts. Do you go to Tedespian a lot? Hmm. 
That miserable excuse for a restaurant. That garbage they serve in the- here's not food. Where, where's the sushi, the tempura, the rice? I'm speaking as a French restaurant, sir. S um, excuse me, sir. This is a Wendy's. I know, it was the best joke ever, right? Right? Uh, stand an ovation. Alright, yeah, calm down, guy. Okay, yeah, cool. My escort is really short. Exactly, right? <laughs> so, she's like, I'm not revealing, right? Meanwhile, like, it's way past her thighs, and you're like, whoa. You're like, I'm not sure about that one. You're lucky you're 18 now. Not, you're lucky you're 19 now, because first game, dodging a couple of cases. <laughs> so, to be in this French restaurant, sir. What do you think we are, boy? In Paris? <laughs> but let me tell you who's in Paris, am I right? <laughs> Look at him burning up. <laughs> I want real food, not those snooty snacks. What about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up there. There. Yeah, the waitresses. <laughs> there was... There was a reason they didn't show that part of her face in the first game. They're practically naked. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my restaurant. It's a miserable excuse for a restaurant. The place is miserable. Hey, he certainly knows the place. Certainly knows the place. He must be regular. But if he hates it so much, why does he keep going? Because he's a fucking perv, or some shit. Or maybe he's just going there for the fucking the the sweetness that is the owner. Are you regular at the restaurant? It's just, if you dislike it so much, why do you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons. You want food? Yeah, take that. He must be hiding something, right? If he is, I should be able to see a sign lock or two. Oh wait, I don't exactly have the Megatama right now, huh? Remember, Nick, Megatama's only alone. You better find it or else. If Pearl, if Pearl ever gets wind of this, I'm gonna be in the world of pain. Damn it. Alright, well, let's see if I can find anything in here. In the shelf? It's rack full of fashion magazines. Well, exactly super feel the place. Try wearing something more chic. Found the sports letter here. Okay. She was 17 the first game. I live in New York. <laughs> if anyone wants to check the age restrictions on New York, you can do so. Let me tell you, it's not the same. Where the fuck is the Megatama? I remember when I was in high school, right? You like getting out of high school, like you know, soft, uh, not sophomore, junior, senior year. Like I'm just hanging out with my friends. <laughs> well, they aren't in New York. I'm just hanging out with my friends, and then they're like, "Yo, dude, you know they changed the fucking legal age." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" They're like, "Man, 17 now." I'm like, "Come on." <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm like. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that crazy about it. <laughs> the amount of fucking- amount of, pe amount of horny teens in fucking high school. And it's like, guys, calm down. You can wait like a year or two. Is there nothing for me to check here? <laughs> Sorry for me. No, I mean like... It didn't bother me. People do whatever the fuck they want as long as they ain't hurt nobody, right? But, like, it's just one of those things where it's like, oh my god, that guy's 17. <laughs> it's like, that guy's 17. That means, get him. <laughs> it's like, like, calm down. <laughs> calm down. Like, people are just doing it to do it, right? Not because they really want to. Is there really nothing for me to look at in here? For my Magatama? Did he steal my Magatama? Huh. Okay. 
Well, I guess I can... I'll head back to the park, then. Hmm. Oops, didn't mean to click move. Examine! What the hell is this? Oh, there's a magazine here. It's a magazine full of job listings. You disgusting rogue picking up something... <laughs> picking up something someone else threw away. Threw away? Did you throw away? Are you looking for a job? <laughs> it's none of your business. Sorry, I guess I just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Give it back. Too bad. Not that you want it so bad, I don't want to give it up. It's mine. Hey, that's mine. You threw it away. It's mine. You can't have it. I used to love sandboxes like this. Uh, you wouldn't leave. Really? You? Sure, finding iron fill- What? Iron fi- Wow. <clears throat> iron fillings in the sand with a magnet. It's your thing to do. Iron fillings. Wow. That's too exciting for words. It was my ambition to collect every single shred of iron in the sandbox. I was such a- I was such a kid back then. So, did you manage to get all the iron? No, I never did. I think I came close, though. Come to think of it, I still have all the iron filings I found way back, way back when. You want them? No. <laughs> you want them? Who we, who we fucking up tonight? This banana. Isn't that, isn't, that's kind of sus. That's kind of sus. I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of sus. Like the fucking little rocky horse thing is a banana? Come on. It's not a bad thing. Besides, I love apples. Like, they're among my favorites. And the apple, sli the apple slide is perfect for you. What's so perfect about it? Maya wants to ride that. Oh, I'm not gonna. Wow. <laughs> Maybe. She, she can do whatever she wants. She's an adult. She's not old enough to drink yet. <laughs> or vote. Wait, no, she's old enough to vote. 18 is vote, yeah? Yeah, 18 is vote. Oh, come on. Don't be a stick in the mud. Slide down it a few times. Go on. No way. I get covered in sand if I slid down that slide. Anyone anyone can see that. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, I'd give it a try, too. Mm. Anything near the water fountain? Nope. I guess there's... Nothing really, but the bird. This one bird that's a different color. Hey, look! Pigeons! Yeah, and heaps of them too. Did you know that pigeons are a symbol of peace? Who the fuck lied? Who the fuck told you that? That's a dove, not a pigeon. Poor things. So they can't be symbols of peace and harmony just because they're gray. Is that it? You're overthinking this one. By just a smidge, Maya. Okay. You. Tell me about it. Hmm, excuse me, sir. Okay, sir. Alright. That's cool. Know anything about this? Nope. Dozen pigeons are literally the same thing. Aren't? Yeah, but aren't. Yeah, they are. They're just different colors, right? Nothing out of that. Guess I'll head to, uh, to the SBN. Do you know anything about this? Job listings? Mademoiselle. Yes. Are you looking for a job? What? No, I just, uh, let me see. Your style is, uh, is different, but you have a good face. Different. Fantate what? I don't even Fantalicious what the fuck is that word? You yeah, pass. Yeah, I will hire you. Bien, come with me. I will teach you everything I know. N Nick? Help! <laughs> You're an adult, Maya. I'll just be here. Nothing bad will happen to you. <laughs> You're different. <laughs> yeah, who's this? <laughs> he said, Who's this? This guy is fabulous. Who's that guy? <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> well, he's a restaurant owner of this French of this French style restaurant called Tres Bien, right? And he's very flamboyant. And apparently, there's a fucking faker going around between. Be 
pretending to be me. And he flirted with him before? <laughs> Where I'm from, having any different words for them, we call them both pigeons. Where I'm from, we just look we just look at them and they're like, look at them crossing the road. The stoplight stop and they're like, I'm on my walkway. It's cool. Alright, well, I guess now that I guess I now Maya's been abducted. Maybe I can check around. Why does this keep It's right for the magazines? All the clones Okay. Some of them have been circled in red. I really hope Mr. Armstrong is not thinking of buying those. Hey man, let him buy whatever the fuck he wants. Take some money from the cash register. It's really tight behind the cash register counter. Can Mr. Armstrong even get in there? And if he got, could he, if he got in, can he get out? Ooh. <laughs> Why they gotta do the French like this? Uh, yeah, he probably isn't French. Most likely. He's probably, uh... I'm assuming since, you know, it's a Japanese game, he's probably one of those people who, like, from Japan who, like, are really obsessed with, like, um, Europe. So he's just pretending. He's like, I got blonde hair and blue eyes, luckily. Mr. Armstrong must be pretty big neat freak. He's already got the table ready to go. And I'm feeling the food was in, was in this place was edible. Okay. Must be the table where the poisoning occurred. Poor area is still cornered off with police tape. Huh. I guess we just wait for Maya then. I'm really like... I'm really stumped. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. I'm trying to look for the fucking Magatama, but it's nowhere to be found. Oh! <laughs> I think it's like a city walk from South Park. I can never get into South Park. It's just not for me. I played the games, though. Looks like they have Maggie and questioning. I guess I've asked her pretty much everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. Ah, oh, fuck. Gumshoe? Ah, Gumshoe. You ready? Well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? The one that's gonna find her innocent? Uh, no, not yet. We've only just started our investigation. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm putting off all my other cases for now, pal. Gumshoe's really fired up about this. Oh yeah, one more thing. The retrial's been approved. Court sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And got Dot's gonna be the prosecutor. Oh. Him. Now listen up, pal. If Maggie found guilty again? Yes. Um, I'll... I'll make sure you get locked up for good. Got it? <laughs> is he only... I'm trying to find the angle that Gumshoe is, like, helping us from. Is it either... Well, is it either because he really cares about us, or is it because he wants us to be in tip-top shape when Edgeworth comes back? Right? Maybe a little A, maybe a little B. Alright. Tell me about the victim. So I was wondering, could you fill me in on a victim? Glen... Glen Elg? What? Glen Elg? How the fuck? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He was a computer programmer. I see. A programmer. What does the scouter say about his power level? <laughs> He was just regular Joe working for a small-time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day. And all she did was take him his coffee on the day of the murder, pal. He <laughs> got left behind. That's where this is coming back. I got left behind. Yeah, I guess. Listen. A lot of you people looked at me when I said... When I said Edgeworth and Francesca? Power couple. But you guys are like... No way, they grew up together, it's Ucky. Hey, she was all the fucked away in Germany, and he stayed here. And he's adopted. Anything could happen. Just saying. Now all I know is he fucked off to Germany too? Like, listen. Listen. Coincidence? I think not. Like, even when she left, even when she was walking out, he said, Take your whip with you. You're gonna need this. I'll see you in a couple of months. <laughs> hey, Maggie. <laughs> yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chief. Said it was the first time he seen the guy. Oh, that's a chief? My bad, chef. 
<laughs> to be honest, I ship Francesca and Edgy more than writing him. <laughs> exactly. Listen, she's just her. She's too powerful. <laughs> you can't deny her. A programmer and a first-time customer at all. At, at all? At that. <laughs> what possible reason could Maggie have to kill the guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was still somehow established in her trial. You're kidding. What was her supposed motive? Sorry, pal. I'm really busy. I haven't even gotten the time to shift through these papers. Look into it yourself, okay? I thought you said you were putting all the stops on my case. What could this motive have been? <laughs> he says, so I'll give you that. Exactly. Uh, the investigation. This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, that's right. The judge already ruled on the case and all the evidence is in, is in already. The only problem with Maggie's testimony. Yeah? Doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal. I got a mountain of papers on this case to look over before tomorrow. So I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... Okay, she's just a bit out there. A bit off base sometimes. But she was a good cop. That's not exactly complimentary, you know? So, what do you think really happened? And just how contradictory is her testimony? Yeah, tell me about those contradictions. <clears throat> Present good dot to gumshoe, maybe? I don't know nothing about the future games, so... I'm not even sure if he's in the future games. The biggest, pro uh, biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie still insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Right? But get this. Everyone else in the place said the guy was alone. Even the chef. And then there's that CD. CD? Oh yeah. She did mention something about a CD. And there was a, there was a sample CD on the table. But our guy turned- uh, but our guys turned the place upside down. There was no CD. Well, obviously your guys didn't do a good fucking job because I found this in like one second. Not only the table, not- not anywhere in the whole- wow. <clears throat> not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. But didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece too? Yeah. But that was for the portable radio in front of the pocket of- in front of the pocket of his hoodie. I don't know what you're talking about. A radio? He didn't have a CD player. You got it? Your phone- It's a radio. That's what he wants you to believe, his fucking scouter. Your phone- Uh... Your phone ain't- <clears throat> Your phone ain't never explained the contradiction at all. Come to think of it, the owner of Tedespian did mention that C didn't mention that CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. So, the guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force, you were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I mean, not too close, you know? Hey, what's with the funny looks, pal? Hey man, I ain't say nothing. I ain't say nothing. I was just... I wasn't any... It wasn't anything like that. Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training, but that wasn't it. Nothing happened. I'm too sure sweating up a storm. Hey, all right, I see you. All right, okay. Ah, uh, so that's it. Our big old gumshoe has a little crush on Meg, so that's why he's so anal about this. Okay. I I don't like her or anything. I I was. Note to self, gossip with Maya about this later. Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? You gotta keep it a secret, you got it? Sure. Would you mind not guessing <laughs> would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, your, your face tells, pal. Not me. <clears throat> Fuck. <laughs> hey, tell your face, pal. Not me. You have to be blind not to see what's on your mind. Alright. So... Tell me more about this. I wasn't at the trial myself, but I asked this one detective I know how your defense was. And what'd he say? He started off by saying, I'm at a complete loss for words. But he must have found some quick because he went on, he went on about how bad you were for an hour. But 
he said you, he said you suck so much it smelled like you were trying to get Maggie found guilty. Looked like I wasn't trying to get Maggie found guilty. Okay. I don't think he'll know anything about the sports paper, but what's that? A sports paper? Yep, I found it in the magazine rack at Trespian. It's dated the same day as the murder. Maybe I'll have something there. Take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey. What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber. Whoa, he actually seems to be thanking for once. Ah, it's no good. Can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey, pal. I'm gonna borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I wanna get a handwriting analysis done on this scribbling. Handwriting, huh? It'd be good to know more about that, in, in case. Thanks, pal. I bet this turned out to be an interesting clue. Alright. Do you want a job? Damn it. Okay. What can you tell me? Can you tell me more about the victim? No. Okay. The chef of Tres Bien, huh? You know, what the chef said to me, Ooh la la, your body is full of the toxins. And then he gave me this shit. What is it? I don't know. The label says Jennifer? I'm under orders to put a few drops of it in my bath every, <laughs> every day. Wow. Under orders? Yeah, you know, there's something about that lady. I mean, guy. Huh? Can't stop thinking about him. Not like that, pal. Give me a break. Hey. Gumshoe. Hey, man, don't worry. I got your back, Gumshoe. I mean, I can't stop thinking what he's involved with in this case somehow. Sounds like he knows a little something more about our charming chef. Okay. Well, tell me about your lover. Have you gone to see Maggie? Of course I have. But I... I wasn't much good at consoling her. I'm not very good with words. Oh. Yeah, I guess I must have looked a bit down. Maggie was really supportive of me. It was great to have someone to talk to. Did he go for her? Or for himself? Okay. Still trying to figure who the fuck Godot is. Who would have such a strong-ass grudge on me like that? Alright, well, I guess that's it. Come oh. So what exactly is that caught your attention about the chef at Trespin? It's, um, kind of hard to say. The guy's probably not even connected with the case anyways. Hey, come on, detective. Did you say you give me the dirt on anything? Well, this is sort of stuff. It's kind of unimportant, gossipy stuff, you know? <laughs> you present... You present everybody but Godot? I didn't present everyone but Godot. And in the other parts, I did present Godot. And... Everyone just goes like, he's mysterious, and that's it. You go to Trespian and investigate the place yourself. And if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, he also says some, uh, something to me. Oh, really? Hmm. Don't support, don't suppose I get a choice in this, huh? Guess I better find out more about the chef. Huh. Oh, my bad. She cross-examined me once, you know. What? Mia did? Yeah. That was us. The big guns locking horns. Witness versus lawyer. It was a battle of cunning tactics and tricks. But the witness isn't supposed to play any tricks. I can't believe she's gone. Aww. I'm sad. <laughs> that guy who's gonna be the prosecutor in Mag uh, Maggie's... And Maggie's reach out tomorrow. Oh, really? He was working on a bunch of more important cases at the moment, but he canceled them all just so he can take you on, pal. Why that guy so determined to see me fail? You sure attract a lot of attention, huh? Too bad it's all the wrong kind. Damn. Alright. Back to the detention center. To Tenespian. The scent of flowers sure is strong. It's almost making me dizzy. Ah! Uh?
Uh, hi? Are you a ghost? Am I being haunted? Listen, ghost or not, you're a cute ghost. Maybe you need, need like a sandwich or something? Okay. Alright, that was... What? <laughs> Who's that just now? A customer? She has some sort of dark aura around her. Ah, welcome, B... B Avenue. Wow, what a cute vo- Wow, what a cute voice! No words can describe what's going on in my mind right now. Happy, sadness, a little bit of confusion. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> no, it's just you, Nick. <laughs> Maya? Well, how do I look? Maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. Then who was the woman I just saw? Oh! Since you're here, might, might as well have something to eat. I'm kind of, I'm kind of in a hurry, actually. Did you learn anything about the chef? Waitress. So, how you like your new job, Maya? I never knew there was so much for a waitress. I never, eh, eh, can't read. I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make coffee, work the cash register. Of course, we need a customer before I can do any of that. Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my gimme a tip smile. Hey Nick, why don't you order something? The chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's the twin tea set. So it's $20 of course. The twin tea set. I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. What? But you can't. Come on, Nick. It's not every day I get to be a waitress. I want to I wanna try carrying plates and working at the cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Hmm. About the lunch. Oh, a fine choice, sir. No. I'm a... Kitchen! Hey! Kitchen! <laughs> lunch special! Start going crazy. With all the extra drink side salad dessert- Oh my fucking god, you snake! I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. I was really getting into this. Just how much is set- Just how much this set lunch- Wow. So how much is this set lunch? Twenty dollars, huh? But with the drink side salad and dessert, it's... Forty-five dollars? Hey, what a sec, Maya! Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Here you, here you are. Our deluxe fortify lunch set. Whoa. A dish inspired by lobster and al- God. Al I can't say that fucking word. I can't say any of these words. <laughs> Something with balsamic vinegar. Bon appetit. Thanks. Come on, Nick. Hurry up and try it already. Lobster, huh? Alright, down the hatch it goes. Well, are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving. Here, it's yours. Really? Remember, Maya? My wallet doesn't print money, so you better polish off that plate. Fuck. <laughs> what? You better, you better finish that food, or it's back in the cage for you. I just remembered, I got to clean the toilets. Hey! <laughs> you can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. Despite how unbelievably bad it tastes. Oh. How does that guy manage to make food that tastes so bad? Hey Nick, you know what to take you wanna take a peek in the kitchen? The kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Hmm. Now what now was it? Eh. I can't read for some reason. What's going on with my brain? 
Now, what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all the chef's greatest secrets. In the kitchen? That sounds tasty. Hey, wait up! Maya! What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Aren't you gonna show me around? <laughs> there goes my plan to find some cool, some cool clue and show it off in your face. I better conduct the search in the kitchen myself. Okay. Well, thank you, Maya, for... You're robbing me blind. How do I... Just move, right? Kitchen. Hmm? Okay. What the fuck? What am I looking at? Is he pouring that into every fucking dish he makes? And here it is, the famous Thorspian kitchen. It's my first time in here, too, actually. There's a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we better search quickly. Chop chop. I know what I want to look at. <laughs> She's a natural. What's this? It looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, they're, they're aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing on the floor. Let's see, one, two, three, 98, 99, 100. They're all the same too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all of the others. Well, what do you know? And does it have a label either? Hmm, it don't smell. <laughs> it's a snake oil vendor. <laughs> exactly. So what's that liquid inside then? <laughs> Quick, Maya, drink it. Test it if it's safe. <laughs> it's poison. Hey, Nick, we should borrow this. I mean... Look how many bottles he got. He won't miss one, will he? Hmm. Hey, he stole my fucking Magatama. Now I know I'm. Now I know I'm in a French restaurant, and I never heard of most of the thi uh, most of these seasonings. Hey, Nick. This container has oyster sauce. What's that? Isn't that used in Chinese food? It, look, right there on the counter. My Magatama. What's it doing here? What indeed? Fucking thief. Okay. Okay, she just says the same thing. And what the hell is this? Now this is one large mirror. Fuck the mirror. What's the book? I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. He's gotta make money somehow. There's a book on the dresser. Shut it! Oh God, Claire! Oh fuck! How do I say that name? Clarence? Cl Clarice? Clarice? Fuck! Whatever. Armstrong bedtime literature. Not exactly. Uh, not exactly Pulitzer Prize material. I can't even say that word either. Looks like a collection of poems he's writing. Poems? Cool. Read one out. And say it's your. And <laughs> say it in your best French accent, with intensity. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> here's one. It's called pre. What the fuck? Pretemps? The two of them, like actors from a film, the coffee is still undrank. Sweet nothing's over too, too soon on the sad Sunday morning. The foolish cocktail is so delicious. Take the last sip of your tea, and I know what I will do. I must lie to you. I must. Huh? That's it? Yep. That's a poem for you. <laughs> I guess that's everything. Maybe? Towel. Hmm. That smells good. Something's bubbling away nicely in the pot. Must be the lobster and... Uh, I can't say... Abalone? Abalone? Fuck. Is that what I just ate for lunch? Maybe. What you ate is only French dish. I know the name of... Okay. Well, I guess that's everything here. Unless there's like a... Hidden... Compartment somewhere. <laughs> that was Garbo. Exactly. There was not. There was nothing in that fucking... In that, uh... There was no real heart in that poem. I had to yawn. Holy shit. Okay, well, I got my Megatama back. 
guess I'm gonna go talk to the old dude. Uh, okay. Hmm, the old guy's not here anymore. Drat. I still have some unanswered questions for him. I feel like I'm gonna be attacked if I do this. The scooter, huh? At least are right in the middle of the park like this. The wheels guard. Huh. Does it belong to that weird goth chick? I mean, it's kind of busted. And her so is her head. Wheel guard. Uh, the wheel guard and the lights are, and lights are busted. I guess it must have been an accident. It's totally wrecked. Yeah, I knew I was gonna get attacked for this. Uh huh. Yep. Oh! Whoa! Think I found my evil twin. Hey. Hey, what you, what you think you're doing with my bike? No, I was just. <laughs> you've been messing with my new ride. Is that what you've been doing? New ride? You're gonna pay for this. <laughs> it wasn't me. Here we go. He didn't go along with the scream. I'm not gonna do it. It's too late at night for that. If I had, you know, if I had more freedoms, if I had a better recording space, I would've. Hey. Uh, hey. Then who's the one that covered my saddle and crap? You just gonna pay, you catch my drift? No, wait a second. I'm not a pigeon. So I couldn't... A wise guy. I had to beat you so hard, it feels like you's gonna be smooching the express train. You's better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers and then you's gonna pay. Pay money. Mucho dinero. Did you get me? I got beach. Mucho dinero. Mula, money, eh? Peso. Actually, I'm a lawyer myself. What'd you say? <laughs> give him kind of like a cho <laughs> give him kind of a cholo fucking accent. What's happening, Holmes? What's good, Widow? <laughs> I have the right to say that I'm half Spanish. <laughs> Phoenix Wright, you say you Phoenix Wright? Yeah, I am. So you a wise guy too, huh? Cause I'm Phoenix Wright, the one and only. What? Out of my way, I got a cruise. He's gone. Surely that guy wasn't my phony, was he? He wasn't anything like me! Guess I better make a note of the scooter. Pathetic. Oh, it's you. A few threats from a little brat like that? And you look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes. Which one is the real phoenix? I can't tell. I mean, that guy has spiky hair. But this guy, his name is Phoenix. And he's red. I mean, phoenixes are red, right? Like fire? I think that's the real phoenix. Makes more sense to me. I was in that strawberry, I had some... <laughs> I was in the strawberry, I had some thinking to do. So you were hiding like a bitch. More like you had some cowering to do. Anyways. A regular at the restaurant? Okay. Sir? Yep. Let's see if we can get out of you now. I knew it. This old guy's got something to hide. Well, before that... Oh, I don't get his profile. Okay. Tell me about the food. Yeah, I guess not. Thought maybe I'd get him talking. You know anything about the bike? Hmm. Alright. Maybe with your schnoz you can tell me what this is. Alright, yep. Thought. Right. <laughs> so, I don't know. It was two phoenixes here a moment ago. Are you, are you like Naruto? <laughs> can you, can you make doubles of yourself? 
Is that your Kaganoshino Buju Jutsu? Whatever the fuck it's called. Kaganoshino Jutsu? Okay. It's time you told me the truth. Why are you regular at the restaurant that you like that you dislike so much? Isn't it obvious? People only have one reason to go to that restaurant to eat. To eat? Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. You insolent brat, how dare you accuse me? Your proof. You got any? <laughs> of course I got proof. Food tastes like shit. The proof is in the pudding. Or in this case, the lunch menu. That's the twin tea set. The food at Tespian is terrible and expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a jaunt of work since I was born, other than feeding the pigeons. A load of crock. Taste another. So what? He's homeless? He's homeless. Guy's homeless. That's what I'm feeling right now. Taste another story, but the price is nothing to me. So, you're saying that you go there because you got money to burn? Exactly. So much cash? I got so much dinero? You go for a swim in the money. <laughs> like fucking Scrooge McDuck just hopping in the money vault. Fortunately, that's a lie. What? You don't have money to burn? You're flat broke. <laughs> Give the food to Gumshoe. Poor guy probably in the last eight. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. He's like, man, I can't eat anything but, like, these ramen noodles. I feel bad for Gumshoe. Everybody's broke in this goddamn game. This is yours, right? My magazine. Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? I, I was... So what? So I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot at the moment. I need spending money. Oh? I don't go to that restaurant for food. It's just go for the job. For the job. I can't say it. Word. Javacino? Javacino? Jav, Jav whatever? Some type of coffee? <laughs> yeah. I think you mean a cappuccino. There you go. Anyways, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. Those have better be some golden beans. What's your problem? You think a poor man better off drinking dishwater, do you? Is that it? No, I wasn't thinking that. I was wondering if the coffee there was really that great. No, it's not. But anyways, yeah, the place has free newspaper to read every day. Newspapers? Exactly. They don't want me hanging around at home, so I go there. Sorry, sir. But there's no free newspaper to read at Tresbien. Yeah, fucking Maggie told us that. Oh, fucking Gumshoe has the goddamn, uh... Gumshoe has the fucking sports paper. Do you think Ed's worked for that? He's the one who keeps cutting the checks. Exactly. Oh, God. Ezra's the only rich one here. Like, the prosecutors are all rich. <laughs> But everyone else? Broke. Huh. Okay, if this if this doesn't work, then fucking... Then we just don't have it. Because I know Maggie told us that they don't get newspapers there. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I'll come back later when I get more, alright? Okay, okay, all right. Damn, sir. I knew I wouldn't have enough. Newspaper, huh? Let's head back to Tereshpian. Maybe the chef is in the kitchen. No, not yet? All right, cool. Well then... Wait, what did she say? Sorry, Nick. I'm a waitress now. I got a pile of work waiting for me. <laughs> for little old me. Okay. Trying to get her to spill the beans. Alright. Nothing? Nothing. 
Guess I'll go talk to, uh... Maggie. Oh, she's not here. Fuck me. Hey, you're just in time. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? The lab got back to me about the newspaper you found. It must mean this... <clears throat> must mean the sports paper with the memo scribbled on it. We know that Edgy is rich. Francesca probably got money from 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 his dad. I mean, her dad. <laughs> In the anime. Oh, not reading that. You should. I didn't watch the anime. Didn't finish his game. Don't don't need anything. Just gonna look away. Just gonna look away. Go away. <laughs> so what they say? Did the analysts turn up anything? They said the doodle was written by the victim, Glenn Elge. Glenn L. I can't say that. What the fuck? No doubt about it. No spoilers, don't worry. Okay. The anime is implied that Gadot's sitting on a pile of cash, but... Okay. Alright, cool. But what about... What about Payne? Who cares about Payne? He has, you know, he has a whole family. They, they pool their money together. Phoenix still sleeping on a couch. <laughs> Actually, where the fuck does Phoenix sleep? Oh my god, is Maya sleeping on the couch? Who's sleeping on the couch? Now, you know what? Phoenix probably sleep on the couch. Maya probably... He probably found, like, a bed for Maya or something. He's like, here, take the bed. Oh, no. Maya gets the couch. Phoenix sleeps on the floor. That's what we do. The victim took the new, uh, took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. That's our best interpretation of the facts at the moment. All right. Well, thank you. MC Bomber. I get the feeling I've heard the name somewhere before. Maya's got a cheap apartment, and Maya lives in the office. Aww. See, I feel like, like, Phoenix, you know, Phoenix is like, listen, Maya, stop freeloading, right? But at the same time, I feel like he would be the guy, who'd be like, here's the key to my apartment. Fucking go, go. I'll stay on the couch. I'll stay here at the office. I feel like he's the type of guy that would do that. Don't forget to report back to me with whatever you find at the restaurant, okay, pal? Since when they start taking orders from Gumshoe. Although, I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. Oh, yeah? Check out this food! Oh, damn it. Alright, check out this poison! You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Well, this one doesn't smell. Huh? I don't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same. Wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle that doesn't smell, huh? It smells like a skulk. Skulk? Smell like a skunk to me, pal. Mind getting me. Mind getting me? Mind letting me borrow that bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. Might be Wolfsbane. Who knows? I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. You suspect Jean Armstrong? Jean, my bad. Jean. Fucking. Fucking Jean. <laughs> I got the guy's number. I know what his secret is. That must be the same secret Gumshoe was talking about before. I guess I better fill you in on the details. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. Cool. There was a joke where they said they were paying for the office with Maya's allowance. Oh! No. Like, I know Maya's bro- Like, I was- Like, I'm sitting here, I'm like, Am I paying Maya? I don't think I'm paying Maya. Because <laughs> we're all broke all the time. But, oh man. How do we- How do we get these famous cases, but we get no money? What's going on? Stop doing your cases for fucking free, Phoenix. You just did a double case, and you got- You got half the price. So, what's Mr. Armstrong's secret? You ever had lunch at Tennis Bien Pal? Mm, yeah. So, how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean and he's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess it's probably the food. The real snoop on the guy is he's up to his ears in debt. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million in the red. Oh! Oh no. Half a mil? We talking about dollars? Yep. Hey, if I was Starla- 
<coughs> if I was Sterling, he'd really be in trouble. Sorry. That figure, that figure just took me by surprise. Yep. But this case is full of surprises. And I'd be willing to bet that the chef got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. Dude. <laughs> Everyone's in the red. Fuck it, exactly. Everybody's fucking broke in this game. It's sad here. It's sad. Everyone's sad. Now we gotta fight. Now we gotta go save Maya before he goes like, "Hey, you wanna make extra money on the side?" Maya, get the hell out of here. He's broke. <laughs> He's broke. Get out of here. Save yourself. Move. Trace bien. Vitamin Square? <sighs> Hello, good sir. I don't think you would react to this, but... Yeah, okay. Hey, anybody get the fucking license plate on that goddamn motorcycle? <laughs> Lex, let me ask Gumshoe about it. Criminal Affairs Department. Damn it. Do I not have this guy's fucking profile with me? <sighs> Shit. Okay. Well, I got this back. I think that's it, really. I think that's it for Gumshoe. Alright, Gumshoe. Peace and love, man. Peace and love. Oh, what the f what the hell's wrong with me? I wasn't even thinking. Like my eyes glossed over for a moment. Guess I'm heading back to Tin SBN. Damn it. I'm gonna need that poison back. Hmm. Must be missing something. Let me check this place real quick, just make sure I'm not missing anything too crazy, just sticking out. Head back to the kitchen. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think there's anything in there. Wait, hold up. Is there a slide button? Nope. I guess I'll just go... Talk to the old man then, I mean... Huh. That's where I found the job listing magazine. Guess better give it back to the old man once the investigation's over. Pigeons are busy. Must be a Maya when she's scarfing down a burger, oh god. I don't see many parks with this anymore. What a great place for kids to play. But the old man's the only one here, chucking seeds at the pigeons. Hmm. Maybe come back here in the middle of the night one of these days to relive it. On second thought, being arrested by Gumshoe would be too embarrassing to bear. <laughs> Alright. Know anything about, uh... Know anything about this? Yeah, I thought so. Oh, wait, did I ever ask him about... My bad. <clears throat> nope, nothing about Maggie. What about this guy? Dude, really? Alright. Oops. Let me head back to Maya, then. Hey Maya, can you tell me anything about the chef? Oh, damn it. Hmm. Huh. 
showed her this, it did nothing. I'm just really trying to... I'm really trying to wrap my head around this one. Maybe I gotta get the newspaper of this guy. Nope. Fuck. What am I missing? Head back to the office, maybe? Nope, didn't mean to press that. Oh! Is Pearl coming to visit? Poor Maya. Looks like Mr. Armstrong really is taking a shine to her. I suppose I'll just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'll go pick her up from Tespia once things have cooled off. Oh, okay. That was, that was weird. Hmm. Nothing else? For half a million dollars, pal. That's half a million dollars. <laughs> huh. But I'll tell you this. The Armstrong guy would have done anything for cash. He was desperate, you know? No, I don't. But I think I sort of get the picture. Forgot what you gotta do here, too. Yeah, see, I thought, like, maybe I'd be like, hey, get something on this scooter or something, but I guess not. Hmm. I'm confused. Fucking hell. I gotta get someone to show up, or something. Maybe it's something with Gumshoe that I just didn't do yet. Maybe that's it? Maybe that's it! Maybe I just didn't show Gumshoe everything, I guess. I'm... The food? Maggie? Have you gone to see Maggie? Of course I have. Yeah, I asked him about that. I won't say anything, but I'm gonna look up a walkthrough. Okay. Shout out to Tennis Band, huh? You know? Yeah. Programmer. I'm such a loser. Aww! <laughs> What the fuck, man? I had high hopes for Maggie. I was gonna make her the best detective there was. But then all of a sudden she was charged with murder and arrested. I never saw it coming. I never imagined they'd find her guilty. I hate myself for not being able to do anything. It's okay, Detective Gumshoe. You still have a chance to make things right. You know what? You're not such a bad guy after all, pal. Really? It took you this long to figure it out? Huh. Just nothing. I don't think I have enough evidence for the, uh, for the old guy. Oh, wait, did I need the sports paper for that? We'll try the old guy again, I guess. Oops, wrong button. Because I feel like I did everything else I was supposed to do. All right, old man, spill it. I can do the old man. I was probably waiting on the sports paper. There we go. There we go. Sports paper. All right. <laughs> Even said the answer I didn't present it because Gumshoe had it at the time. But then I, I started doubting myself. That's the problem. I'm like, well, with the sports paper, really? I mean, it's just one paper. <laughs> Take a look at this. What is it? 
It's a newspaper I found behind the magazine rack. It's a sports paper. But now it's a newspaper. Okay. So, what of it? It was the only paper there. And it's dated more than one month ago. What? Do you see what I'm getting at here? The restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is just one this is one that a customer happened to leave behind. Sports news? Yeah, but like you still would call that a newspaper. Usually when you hear something like sports paper, you think of like a sports magazine. Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? I'm not hiding anything. I'm gonna have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason why you go so much to the is... Uh... The money? Yeah. Thought so. Oh my god, I took so much damage from that. <laughs> oh, wait, hold up. My bad. What am I thinking? Ugh. What am I thinking? You go for Maggie. What are you asking? What are you asking me about that girl for? She was the waitress at Terrace Bien. Huh. Therefore, the, the answer to the mystery. Of why old men would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant. It's the waitress. Fucking simp. <laughs> but I don't recognize that face. And you're probably telling the truth here. Because you weren't looking at the girl's face. But her outfit! <gasps> That's the truth, isn't it? You became a regular at the restaurant because of the waitress's uniform. Uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Fucking admit it, you filthy freak. Do you? Do you? That waitress was your... Enough! Please! No more. Stop saying the word. Stop saying waitress. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, it... A lot of people like maid uniforms. <laughs> really? I'm not that... Eh. Yeah, I'm not gonna kink shame the old guy. A, she's legal, and B, the old dude needs to get his rocks off too, right? You know, men in older age, you still produce sperm. Female lose their eggs. Sound like a fucking insult, <laughs> right? I'm not gonna kink shame. The, I'm not gonna kink shame the guy, but you know, <laughs> I don't get the maid uniform thing though. Well, maybe I do. You know what? I don't get the maid uniform thing, but I get the leggings and the stockings because I I I, I said it before. I'll say it again. I'm a leg guy. I like looking at legs, thighs, legs. They're nice. All right. Um, sir. Yes, it's true. I was there for the young girl. Fine. So I'm dirty. <laughs> Wicked, sinful old devil. Just the white devil. No, I didn't mean it like that. And we got one of those lousy cup of Jovicinos every time for eight dollars. All because of, all because of serving girl. All because of the serving girl. Punish me, lock me up. Really? It's not what I'm here for. You'll be the same. Another twenty years and you'll understand what it's like. You know how painful it is to be an old man like me? No, really, listen. Stop calling me that! Have a name, you know, boy. Show some respect. I'm Victor Kudo. Sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones think you know all, know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. I won't tell you anything. This guy has the. This guy was in the restaurant at the time of the incident, which means I have to wear. I have to hear his testimony one way or another. I don't believe this. I even broke his sign locks and everything. I guess I have to try to get him where, where he's, when he's in a better mood. Just give him, just give him alcohol. Get him tipsy. That's all you gotta do. Is fucking is the dude back yet? God. I guess I'm heading to the fucking. Did I get anything from that? <laughs> I 
I didn't get anything from that, did I? Uh, Grimo Affairs? Talk? Oh, well, we got this guy now. He looks like one of those grouchy old man types. Yeah, it's okay, though. I don't mind guys like that. But if he's involved with the case somehow, that's a different story. Sure. Here's a tip for you, pal. If you want to get information out of a guy like that, you're going to have to find his weakness and trying to get under his skin. It's weakness. I wonder what that might be. Okay. Oh, no! Oh, no! We can make him talk. Yeah. Like, in my mind, I was like, buy the old man booze. I played Yakuza games before. Buy the old guy, buy the homeless dude some fucking booze. He'll start talking. And then Gumshoe's like, you gotta go after his weakness. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Maya, can you do me a solid? Oh, it's that old man. He feeling, <laughs> he's still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. Got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch. Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me for a while? She doesn't deserve this. She really doesn't. I feel bad about this. Listen. Maya's been with me for years, and even I don't get to eye her up. So fucking, why should he? <laughs> would you mind coming with me for a while? Uh, me? Why? Something I really want to ask that old man. Sure, just get changed. No, 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 you're fine. <laughs> Kinda hot for a while, this will be a cringe fest. Aw, oh, dude. <sighs> I'm not. <sighs> I'd just be happy Pearl's not here to see this. Can you go like that? I guess. Um, sir? Hmm? You again? Um, well, well, I see. Uh, Nick, his eyes are burning into me! It's okay! It's okay! Shh, shh, it's okay, just let it happen. Shh. <laughs> just let it happen. <laughs> oh, no. Huh? You're still just a little child. Run along and play! <laughs> okay. Woo! Play on the slide. Uh, we were so close. Just a little more and he would have slipped. Hmm. Pigeons. Hmm, yeah. How can we crack this guy? Excuse me, please, sir. Quiet. Can you see I'm feeding the... No. 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 No! <laughs> Mia! She's fucking dead! Well... If you don't mind, sir. I really love to talk with- I really love to talk with you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, of course, certainly. I'm Victor, Victor Kudo. Even from beyond the grave. Uh, uniform's about to bust. That's every time she transforms. And don't even- that shit she did with Pearl! <laughs> that was pushing it! Alright, tell me what you saw. About the incident. You mean, the man who died after drinking the Java Kino? Or Java whatever? It's like he's a different person. It was, it was quite a shock, even for me. It was all strange- it was a strange looking boy. The girl took the Java- oh, fuck. Cappuccino, I'm just gonna call it Cappuccino, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna call the Cappuccino over him. You see? And was the customer alone? Definitely. He was the only person at the table. Then he took one sip of his... J f fuck. <laughs> one sip of his cappuccino and... And... And he said something like... <laughs> and then collapsed and died. Oh. How terrifying. You're so good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything. Whatever you want to know. Certainly seems to be telling the truth now. It looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see the other man, either. Do you- do you like the food at Tres Bien? Well, of course. I'm really quite a sophisticated man. I was a young businessman once, you know. I set up a casino in London. Really? Oh, interesting. 
Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. What a lovely story. London and England? <laughs> London and England, not France? <laughs> London's in England! Oh yeah, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. It's too much. I can't take it. I want... I want France? Can't believe me. I was laughing at this guy. Tommy laughing at this guy too. Shit. You visit Terespian a lot, do you? Don't you? Of course. I mean, yes. I like to come and see you there. Uh, really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you. I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear. The chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right. The man's an ex-con. He, he's an ex-con. Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh no, those eyes, those eyes, I can't take this. He's really got this guy eating out of the palm of her hand. He steals things from his customers. From his customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things, mainly. He's a pilfer. And so you be careful around him, my dear. Are you sure about that? Of course. He was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my cappuccino. He really is regular. Let me write you a little haiku about it. A haiku? On, Jap on Japanese po a Japanese poem. It looks... Fuck! <laughs> it will explain all you need to know about the chef. What? Convicted before a wicked man or woman, repeated offender. Oh. If he takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. Poor guy. You can do enough for me. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. We really... <laughs> Fuck. We got some real important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me for something like this. Mm. Your jaw hurts. I had to read the damn thing. I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah, plus, no one came to the restaurant. Ooh la la, Mademoiselle Maya, no one. How can you leave me like this? I'm sorry. It reminds me. Mr. Armstrong had a, had a psyche... Yeah. Had a psyche locker three, didn't he? I'm gonna have to break those. See the burning passion in his eyes. Mr. Armstrong, I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. What? what? Volunteer? I can whatever. Of course! Sure. Here we go. How many you got? Three? Shouldn't be a problem. Oh, <laughs> look how sad he is. What is happening? I don't like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Alors, I will confess everything. Just don't hurt me. <coughs> uh. I gotta drink water. Fuck. <clears throat> I really like... <laughs> I thought it really, like, kicked me right there. Well, that's a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket. The man who died here had a lottery ticket. For half a million dollars. Half a million? We. Oui. But after the incident... I'm yawning. After the incident, the ticket... It disappeared. The ticket disappeared. Was the motive the prosecution gave for Maggie? It says she poisoned the man in order to get the ticket. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? You've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me. 
and I want to know the reason why. No, um, monsieur, you doubt me, but I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong, a half million dollar lottery ticket, I think I know who took it. I think the winning lottery ticket was stolen by this person. By you! Mr. Armstrong, I believe there's a very high probability that it was you. Wow, this is one piercing scream. <laughs> Even a man like him. Why? You have no evidence. I'm not Master Mask. I'm not the kind of person who steals properties of others. So I disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to I have evidence to the contrary. I present to you the proof that you have stolen from others in the past. What is this? A poem? Oh, Monsieur, you know me well. I adore poems. Please read it. Put some f put some feeling into it. Convicted before a wicked man or woman. Repeated offended. <laughs> Repeated offender. Sorry to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong. But you have been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Okay. You deny it? Don't make me... Don't make false accusations. So, do you have any proof? I want to steal the... And what? The incontestable proof that I have ever stolen from one of my customers. Uh, me? It seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. What's that? This is my Magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. Wow. This game's just about broke some windows. Wee wee. I have a weakness for little trinkets and like in the, in the figurines. It just slips out. I cannot stop it. So the handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? It's the truth. I was just a timid little girl inside, Monsieur. A timid little girl. Besides, this time I was not. This time I was not a small trinket. It was five hundred thousand dollars. Armstrong's a klepto. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we deal with it with Maya. She likes to steal shit. She likes to steal shit and eat whatever leftovers she can find. Why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really not. <laughs> Come on. Anyone who says, why would I steal the half million dollars? I don't have the need for money. You always have a need for that money. It's true that you're in some pretty serious trouble. And that you're desperate to need large amounts of cash. Get some fucking bullshit right here. Check it out. Maya can do anything she wants. Yeah, she can. They can get away with it. This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? You have a loan to the to the tune of half a million dollars. That lottery ticket would have wiped off your debt. Well, Mr. Armstrong, you gotta say for yourself. Mr. Armstrong, you said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? It's a man, he was listening to the radio, his earpiece. Maggie said something about that too. The winning numbers was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, he exploded. Yes, half a million, he shouted. The ticket? We... He had all the tickets spread on the table. I was so desperately in need of money, so I put the poison in his coffee? No! Oh, naughty man. I simply held myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't even fucking know the word. <laughs> uh... He had so many of them. But one of them wasn't the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, it's not true. And I'll take it. Take it for half a million, I mean. But you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. <sighs> Miss none. It was not. That's enough. Huh? Huh? Ah! 
Mr. Gadot. What the heck are you doing here? Hmm. This is without a doubt. This is without a doubt the worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. He came here for coffee? He's craving for coffee, knows no bounds? Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day of the question on the day in question. I am I am the airhead, no? Just a pretty little girl who's who everyone's laughing at. But in that case, Maggie should be the only one only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So, the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something, a dollar. You see? I was just a pretty face. Was that my looks? I have nothing. So? What happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal? Indeed. What did happen to it? I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... Well, we'll just have to wait and see how the motive turns out tomorrow, won't we? Voila, you two. Time to laugh at a little pretty, at the pretty little airhead. Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Looks like we got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the winning ticket go? I got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyways. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer, uh, any longer for this. And currently, not again. <laughs> now you understand why Maya had the exploding reaction. <laughs> Fucking Gadot walked in. He walked. He opened the door and he's like, "Why is the floor wet? <laughs> What's going on?" And then Maya went, "Why is the floor wet?" And then fucking, they both looked at Phoenix, and he's like, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't mean it. Holy shit. Alright. Oh, I see. Guess I should have expected this. Also, I just passed out in Wright's hands. Oh, shit. I don't think Wright would catch him. I think Wright, Wright would probably let him fall. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. <laughs> Scout's honor. Maggie? Uh, Detective Gumshoe. Are you doing alright? How you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you. Yeah, yeah. You better square this case anyways. Got it, pal. Maggie's innocent, you hear? And if you screw up, if you, if you screw up, if you screw up, then I'll be doing some squared away myself. You, you get it? Now I got beach. Squaring away some paperwork. Oh. I think he's serious. Hey, detective. You're on our side for once, right? Yep. So, you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Oh, of course. I got the situation under control. I'm gonna be the first witness on the stand today. If some, something I say doesn't mess with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. First time gone, she was serious about something. I don't know, he was serious towards the end of uh, Justice For All. I mean, he, he fucked up, but still, he was trying his best. I gotta give him props for that. Even at the end of the first game, he was like breaking all kinds of rules. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? I gotcha. I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired, I always admire you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smooth today, huh? I can only wish. I can only wish. All right, let's get this shit started. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The only thing that'll be smooth is jazz. Ah, uh, bitter. Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright. 
Yes, Your Honor. Ugh. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, You was talking to me? You was talking to me? Hey! I'm fucking walking here. <laughs> it was a little, well, intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix right is back with us now, is he? Our trusty? So, Mr. Gadot, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're a fake or the real deal, we will just, we'll just, uh, wow, we'll find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can really tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had to study law or not. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. I better not find out that fucking, that fucking Von Karma had another child. <laughs> he actually knows our name, fucking finally. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on the case once. Therefore, I won't stand for irrelevant testimonies during this, during this retrial. Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I'm not, I'm not planning on repeating any of the phonies, the phony me, eh. anything the phony me said. Now then, Ms. Gadot, please, summon your first witness. Why are you so sad? Let's start with the formality, shall we? Name, occupation. Witness, state your name for the court. I was surprised that Von Karma had a kid at all. <laughs> Don't think they'll do that again. Oh man. Listen, all I know is fucking Francesca showed up and I said, he spit out that? What? <laughs> Where's the mom? Oh, sorry. The name's police department detective, occupation Dick Gumshoe. Nice job, Gumshoe. Other way around, detective. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyways, I'm the officer in charge of the case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe really has got everything under control. I see. So Detective Gumshoe, would you outline the court the basic facts of the case? Y yes, sir. The victim's name is Glenn L... Oh God, Glenn L... Whatever. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens, uh, Incorporated, a local company. <laughs> He's a programmer where you work for, Blue Screens. <laughs> what? This is the victim's autopsy report. Gotta give it to him. The court accepts this into evidence. Alright, died of potassium cyanide poisoning. Why did I say, like, potassium? A potassium cyanide poisoning, time of death, 1.30 and 2.30 p.m. Hmm. And here are the floor plans for the restaurant. When the, <coughs> when the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poison coffee was brought over to him uh, by, uh, by the waitress. The waitress being the accused. Yep. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. <laughs> Must be a great company. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Jean Armstrong, the owner of the, sh the owner and chef, a regular by the name of Victor Kudo. Hmm. Still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Come, detective, take up this hammer and nail and nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, detective Gumshoe. Let's have your testimony. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. You understand that the guy, Jin, uh, Glenn, whatever fuck, Glenn was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poisoning were found in his cup of coffee. 
And what was found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. Gumshoe, you never gave me back my fucking poison bottle. And, uh, it looks like Miss Bird might have, well, kind of motive. Leave that motive part out, jackass. Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. The fact of this case seems to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes. Please, not no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you that wasn't me. Don't want to sound mean, but Glenn, El Glenn Elg is it's not a hard thing to say. I don't fucking know. It's his last name that's getting me. Ilk? Elg? Ilge? Leg? I don't fucking know. Just call him Glenn. It's hard to say for a, a ghetto child born, born in the ghetto. I'm an outlier of my kind. <laughs> when uh, uh, when incident took place, okay, hold up. I feel great because I have like a full bar of health. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> it's not words. It's just English. English is hard. English is stupid. The world would be a better place without it. <laughs> All right. When the incident took place, victim was alone. Well, we have nothing to prove that. Have nothing to prove that. We understood that the guy, Glenn, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in a cup of coffee. And what we found was potassium cyanide stuff really packs a punch. And it looks like it had some kind of motive. English is the easiest language in the world. No. No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, but it's not. It really isn't. If you're a native speaker, English is the easiest thing, but if you're not, it's literally one of the hardest. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> Some kind of motive? Yeah. But if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. You know what's my golden- you No, know my golden rule is detective. Check out a bad cup of coffee, you can always get another. Huh? I don't get it. I didn't even learn English, and I, and I know it. I don't believe that. I'm saying... <laughs> I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. Aw. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, gumshoe. She was... They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's why we heard yesterday, too. Disappeared from the scene of the crime. And if it wasn't just and it wasn't just any lottery ticket. God knows that Gumshoe is with us this time. Exactly, he knows. He's got fucking spies everywhere. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket, it was a winning lottery ticket for half a million. Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket too, didn't he? But he said but he stole the wrong one. Then it's possible Maggie stole the winning one. What should I do? Should I press on at this point a little harder? Press. Wait a minute. The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappears, no way in- in the- uh, in pl ah. <coughs> My throat. <laughs> Alright. No way implicates my client. Huh. I have heard- I have- wow. I have here in my hand the very ticket in question. That's half a million dollars. One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search of the defendant. What? Where'd you get that English is hard? From everyone that I grew up with that didn't speak English natively? And also other people that I've also other people that I met after and fucking, when you live in the ghetto, there's a lot of mixture of like, uh, you know, you get a lot of, you know, Hispanic cultures in there. 
So a bunch of friends' parents, they were trying to learn English, and it was so difficult for them, right? Like, just a lot of, like, English is one of the hardest languages. It is known as one of the hardest languages because it's just full of nothing but bullshit. <laughs> so if you're a native speaker, you you're pretty uh you're pretty okay with it, right? Or if you or if your language derives from something that has to do with English, then you have an easier time because other languages find like multiple shortcuts and stuff. We also have to deal with fucking homophones and hominins and fucking and fucking like stupid ass vowels and shit. But at least we don't do that weird shit that what French does or German. What is it? Where it's like you can't have two vowels touch each other. So you make one word super fucking long or whatever. Something, something stupid like that. <laughs> you start learning when you were four and you still not good at it. Exactly. Like I just knew like we had a lot of uh we had a lot of transfer programs in like my schooling area and stuff like that and like just so many people fucking just had such a hard time with it like for years uh, she's quite a lucky like my like fucking for example like this is just kind of I guess it's kind of my life but like my mom she's a you know native English speaker but Grew up in the ghetto, so she she doesn't even pronounce R as R. She says Ara. <laughs> so, it's just ridiculous. Uh, she's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. And my dad's from El Salvador, so. So it was pretty hard on him, too. You will submit the ticket as evidence to the court immediately. I better keep an eye on the ticket. That's why the judge voice is quivering. Oh, shit. This ticket was present. Uh, <laughs> ticket was pres presented to the court in the previous trial too, but it feels heavier now somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. <laughs> Still didn't learn English, and, <laughs> and I understand it, but you can't write it. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of language stuff. Getting the writing part down is fucking pain in the ass. Or just a lot of languages. Because talking it... Because talking it, you can find, like, so many shortcuts. But writing it, like, for other languages and stuff, they have really specific ways of doing it. And some of them have, like, different, uh... Different, like, emotions attached to it. But they're, like, the same words and shit. So writing it can be fucking difficult for, like, other languages. Because most other languages don't use, uh... They don't use, like, feminine and masculine things, do they? Like, there's just kind of, like, unisexed for the most part. Uh, let's see. And that was on Maggie's person, unfortunately. You could just just Google this. English isn't even in the top ten for hardest language. Just learn to feel the fact we, <laughs> we're all bamboozled with. It's still quite hard. Uh, it's only thought as easy because every country learns it for convenience. Yeah. Along with, uh... It's uh, English, Spanish, and what's the third one that's like mostly spoken? Uh, Swahili. No, not Swahili. Is it fucking? Is it French? It's French, right? Yeah, English, Spanish, French. Mandarin. Mandarin is difficult. I know Mandarin's fucking difficult. Mandarin is one of those hard ones. Uh. Spell a bunch of things wrong in the last sentence, and that's why, that's why I said it. Alright. <clears throat> you really think there's any contradictions in this testimony? To be honest, I don't know. When Kamshu told us, told us out at the lobby, he said we're forming, uh, forming a united front. Alright, hold up. I'm already forgetting what the fuck the testimony was, because we're sitting here talking about languages and shit. Alright. <clears throat> okay, when incident took place, victim was alone, table. We understand the guy who was listening to the radio. Traces poison were found. Let's go with the alone one. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Can I stop you there for a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for he's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bird. 
She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said, and I... What killer wouldn't say, say that when faced with homicide convictions? Hey. Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by... Isn't supported by the owner or any other customers. Uh, those are only commonly, common in North American? Or really anywhere else. Okay. <clears throat> Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, that's true. There's two testimonies tied up on that. They both said there's no other guy at the table. Hmm. What should we do? Should I press on at this point? A little harder. Now press on! Press on! Well, maybe the other witness just missed him. Perhaps their view of victim tables was obscured in some way. That argument is as weak as coffee at Turtles Bien. I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population, the defendant. Godot, that fucking sucked. You're lame for that one. Pretty much forced to learn other languages because no one speaks mine. <laughs> what is it? Is it, uh... Is it like the... What is it? Like Irish? What's the what's the dying language that everyone in Ireland has to learn now? Is it Gilgish? Gil... Gilgish? <laughs> that was cool in 2004. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. What is it, Guy Fieri? Taking you straight to Flavortown. USA. Population? Me. <laughs> This is a photograph taken from near the entrance of the, of the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree with such a clear view of the scene of the crime. It ain't Irish. Hmm. Uh, fuck, I already lost my place. How, Mr. Trey, could anyone have overlooked the second person at the table? It was released in 2014, so it's in fact cool. Oh, it's hip. I see. It certainly seems to certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clear. Well, thanks for the piece of evidence, jackass. Hungarian. Oh, interesting. Well, incident took place. Victim was alone at table. Understand the guy was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of the poison were found in his cup. That was potassium. Packs a punch. Tell me about the poison, because I didn't get my fucking bottle back. You're Romanian? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and I'm here, I'm over here, stupid fucking New Yorker. <laughs> stupid fucking New Yorker. I speak English, so I don't need any other, any other language. <laughs> Some traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup. Nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid? Or was it a powder? I... I had to put in a... If I had to put in layman's terms, I'd say it was powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Huh. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trite? Maybe. Salt to caramel flavor? A jalapeno coffee? I don't know, there's like jalapeno chocolate, so whatever. The victim took this coffee black with no sugar. Okay, damn. Mm. Seems that the poison could have only been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press to the point? Might as well, I'm not getting any... I ain't getting hurt from it. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Ha! Huh. What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank it? We have the autopsy report, Phoenix. Oh, hey, you're right. That's what I think. <laughs> Right's just that stupid. Still waiting for Transylvania. <laughs> In case you were wondering, the last objection was for the detective there. Huh? For me? Dude, that coffee is too dark, Godot. I don't know what you're putting in your shit, but that's like gray. It's, it's like, it's mud. <laughs> oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. Th that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Um, 
<laughs> what piece was it again? Dark coffee is the best. I do drink my coffee black. I, bring, I drink my coffee black and I drink my tea black. Come on. I look away for one second. What the hell, Phoenix? Should I be grateful this coffee only is hot enough to give me first degree burns? Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. Oh, yes. It's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in this cup. <laughs> Guys, keep dreaming. Guys. What you mean, keep dreaming? <laughs> Drinking coffee black is great. Drinking black tea is great. You get all the, you get all the real flavors, right? Now sometimes, sometimes you feel like you want to treat yourself. You put some coffee, right? You can put a little bit of creamer in there, right? Maybe, maybe like some chocolate shavings or whipped cream or some bullshit. Oh, talking about talking about Transylvania. Fuck. <laughs> Don't care about that. There's a bunch of boomers here who still care. We, one, one of these days, all the boomers will be gone. Don't worry. For the record, the only prints of the only print of the cup were the. Eh. For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. Okay. Upon further investigation, this cup was found has certain chemical substance. That's enough. The fact of this case seems overwhelming clear to me. The the defendant. Eh. I'm losing my I'm losing my brain functionality here. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crimes of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond a reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. I like an old... I like an old man who knows the score. What? <laughs> Gadot's sitting there, he's like, Hmm, I like an old man who knows the score, like rubbing his nipples and shit. There's also the matter of the half million dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides very credible motive. I mean... For that sum of money, even I might tempt to bend the rules. I don't, I don't mind an old man who's weak to, I don't mind an old man who's weak to a siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has already ruled her guilty once. Hmm. Lived in Canada for most of her life, so you don't care either way. Dad's also Hungarian. It's also part Hungarian. Gadot's the straightest man in Ace Attorney. Listen, listen. Can you really tell me a guy who wears a mask like that all the time is the straightest man in Ace Attorney? I don't believe it. Nuh uh. No way. Not happening. I don't believe it. You gotta give me more proof. Also, look at all the jewelry he's wearing. Look at all the jewelry he's wearing. That's, all, that's what I'm saying. Say so it's about time to wrap up this repeated performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron that the lifeful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow. It's not the cleanest ever I've seen. This stain looks like... Looks like blood. <laughs> it seems the star of our play was a little flustered. It's just a ring. Wait, is he married? It's not on his... The fuck was that noise? It's not, his, it's not on his uh, ring finger. It's on like his uh, pointer, right? <laughs> he is also secure with his masculinity. He wears a mask. <laughs> it makes him extra straight. The coffee? It's not exactly the first thing I ca that caught my eye. Of course. The coffee stains isn't the most interesting thing on the apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course. I'm referring to the pocket. The pocket? A search carried for right under the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. A bottle of poison? In, in Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Katad is so straight he can suck a dick and it wouldn't be gay. 
<laughs> what is that? What is a scary movie? The first scary movie? He's all like, he's like, listen, I ain't gay. You're gay for sucking my dick. <laughs> the court will, the court will accept this item as evidence. Fucking Maggie, what the hell happened? Something's still bothering me, Mr. Gadot. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? I don't think it's blood, it's probably just food. Blood stain? What blood stain? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. It's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You don't need to be told, just look at it. Well, detective. Could the stain really be blood? No way, sir. That's... It's just ketchup. Ketchup? She must have gotten some on her apron while taking, while taking someone their breakfast that day. You couldn't have spoken up a little sooner, Detective comes through. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, fuck. How do I pronounce that? Oh, shit. How do I pronounce that? Mac... Max Leak? Mac... Mac... I can't... You're looking at the wrong guy to pronounce names. I'm just going to call you Max if you're okay with that. Hi, Max. How's it going? <laughs> Hope your day's been fine. Pull a stunt like that again, and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup. Wait, what? <laughs> Witness? Oh, that's not good. Oh, it's all chunky and shit? I thought everyone knew what it was already. Doing good? That's great to hear. You better stay that way. You better fucking stay good, or, or, or you know, something else gonna happen. Actually, I'm a country. My journey just started. Hmm? Care to explain more? <laughs> I'm a little confused by that statement. Like, what the fuck? Sorry, I, <laughs> I thought I saw something on my fucking microphone stand for a moment. Is there a bug on my fucking microphone stand? What is this? Oh no, it's just like a mark I didn't see before. What the hell? <laughs> I got scared for a moment. I was like, what the fuck? Something on my microphone stand. A bug crawling up to my face or some shit? <laughs> Maybe he just woke up. Max. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Max. In France where you live, it's 10 a.m. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Woke up two hours ago. Yeah, don't worry, man. Fucking, uh, I'm over here on the, in New York on the East Coast. So most of my streams are, most of my streams are late for people in the U.S. But for people ever, elsewhere, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Hmm. Most of my start times are usually like 12, I mean 12, 2 in the morning for me. All right. I haven't seen anything, I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made of this case. Hmm. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They have all been clearly established. Well, Trite? It seems you really are the phony after all. Uh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. You really know how to nut a man, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, is this case three? Yes, it is case three. Everybody loves the case. <laughs> Wait for case four. I still love Case 4 from the first game. It was amazing. I liked it. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. Alright, first investigation. Let's have it. The crime was reported at 2.25pm 2 by the kind of scary old man. What? That's... That's suggestive. <laughs> She looks so adorable, though. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. It is. The victim didn't have any identification on him, but we figured out that he was pretty, figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm. Identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're the real lawyer, try it. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So let the fun begin. Oh, shit. Where's the chef? <laughs> he ain't here yet. 
Oh shit. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we can find. If we're getting distracted by the chat. <laughs> getting distracted by the chat here. All right. Let's see. Crime was reported. Blah, blah. Poor Maggie passed out from the shock. The victim did not have any identification on him. Why is that? That's weird. You didn't have Vinny? Are you saying that it was stolen? No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him. Did he have any money on him? How was he going to pay for his food? All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. 58 cents. Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less than their wallet than me. Oh, why is everybody so broke in this game? The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. Or some kind of outlaw. Why not give him a bit of an edge? Got distracted by the fact that Case 4 is the next one? Oh man. But we figured out we had, uh figured out who he was pretty quickly. Investigation went smoothly. Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and poison. And that's it, there's nothing else missing from the crime scene. Listen, I, I don't even want to press that statement, but just going on, just going off my gut feeling. Oh, come on, come on! That's that's some that's evidence they straight up missed. All right, fucking, I'll reload it. <laughs> I'll reload it. All right, nothing missing from the crime scene. Get the fuck out of here. So the half million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for. But wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh yeah. The one that the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just gonna let him get away with it? It's just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little. Except for Gumshoe. If you don't find a hole in the testimony, the judge is going to hand down the verdict. Alright. But Maggie and Gumshoe are the... <laughs> are dumb and dumber. Oh, shit. John Armstrong is named Luigi LeBlanco in the French version. Oh, my God. Really? And he says he's Italian. Oh, shit. Yes, I did already meet the chef, by the way. He was fantastic. I loved every moment of him. Case 5 hype. Fuck. Fuck, it's gonna be a while since we get there. All right. Poor Maggie had passed out from shock. It must be real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him, but we figured out who he was. I'm gonna press that one. Wait a sec. Huh? Did I say something dumb? Let me paraphrase what you just testified in this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yeah? Yeah, basically. And f in that case, how are you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that? He's so, so let down. He got the whole sagging shoulders and puffy eyes thing going. There was a pre there was a prescription bag on the. Ah, my throat's getting raspy. Fucking hell. That's what happens when you do this for fucking. Oh my god, we're at like the six hour mark. Are you kidding me? <laughs> there was a prescription bag on the victim's table along with the lottery ticket. It seems Mr. Glenn visited his doctor before he went to Tres Bien. We got the victim name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's liable enough. What should I do? Should I leave this alone? No, 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 no. Ask about health insurance. Yeah, but who would go for health insurance? Tell me more about the prescription. <laughs> Leave my boy Gumshoe alone. Case 4 is pretty hype. Case 5. Hype train getting you over and over. <laughs> Ask a dog for coffee. I wish I had coffee right now. I got nothing but tea in my house. So what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag was found empty. That's suspicious. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. And was completely empty. Okay, does it say what the prescriptions are, though, on the bag? You're, in, you're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? Desperate are you, Trite? Hmm. 
Now, what happened with the investigation after that, detective? <laughs> How does the zoomer say it? That's sussy. Yeah. You know, so, like, people saying sus used to be like a thing here and there, but ever since like Among Us, it's like, you know, bro, you're really sus. And I'm like, okay, I get it. It's like, it's like the early, it's like the early 2000s where everyone would just be like, bro, that's mad epic. It's so epic. Right? <laughs> or sauce. Yeah, you got the sauce. Yo, is that the sauce? I'm gonna get some of that sauce. All right. There's nothing else missing from the crime scene. When Maggie searched, we found the lottery ticket, bottle of poison, but we figured out who was. Da -da. The victim didn't have any identification on him. And <laughs> some tomato sauce. <laughs> yeah. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. How long was the defendant unconscious for? The officer got to the crime scene around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at the time. Took another 10 minutes or so before she came to. How would I like to ha uh <laughs> I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. That's kind of creepy. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search too. <laughs> wow! Why are they attacking him? Uh gumshoe. <laughs> Simping. Yep. Uh would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that, all pretty and peaceful. What the fuck? You're a professional detective, Gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. You call her a bird? <laughs> Save the romantics for your own time, detective. All we need to know about the investigation. Oh, guess I'm pretty red right now, huh? Alright. Have an identification on him. What was the first one again? Crime was reported by a scary old man. Scary old man detective come shoot. There's an old man who's regular at the restaurant where they, uh, where the incident happened. Uh, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled, then he hurled, <laughs> then he hurled abuse at them and, and seed, what? Oh, then he hurled abuse at them and seeds. Seeds. It was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. I guess not even the mighty Gadot can avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in the place at the time. He took this time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. <laughs> was it my grandpa? Grandpa, is that you? Maybe. I used to kill people back in the day. <laughs> Alright. Fuck. Is this just me, like, like... I'm sitting here looking at, at looking at all this, trying to, like, pick and choose. But do I just really gotta fucking... I really just gotta press everything, it seems. Search, found the lottery ticket. Nothing was missing from the crime scene, okay. Well, since we got new evidence and shit, let me save that up. <laughs> I like the funnies. Don't worry. We're here for funnies. Okay. Let's see. Well, this didn't count for some reason. Potassium. Uh, blueprints. Winning ticket. Found for half. Photo taken from the kitchen. Hmm. Okay. The coffee contained. Alright. Worn by Maggie at the time of the incident. Small pockets. Alright. Random chip event in progress? <laughs> what? Quinn isn't dead. He's sleeping. <laughs> Everyone do the monkey. You ever watch Johnny Bravo? I'm not sure. Maybe you haven't. American over here. But like, Johnny Bravo, during the fucking theme song, he's like, Everybody do the monkey with me. <laughs> Come on. I love Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo wouldn't fly nowadays, though. He's too, uh... He's too, um... Masochistic, I guess. Not masochistic. What am I saying? Uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, fuck. Misogynist. Sexist misogynist. Yeah, that's what I mean. 
but I still do love that one clip. He's all like, huh, mama warned me about women like you. And I was hoping she was right. <laughs> As she's like tying him down to the bed. I was like, God damn. He's like, I was hoping she was right. All right. Let me actually sit down. Let me actually sit down and look at these fucking, look at this shit. I'm getting distracted. My mind's wandering places. All right. Crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. By, by, a kind, by a kind of scary old man. All right. I believe that. Poor Maggie had passed out from shock. Must have been real tough for her. The victim had any, didn't have any identification on him. Let's see. Just making sure. Right. Check things. <laughs> Things fine, but I have to agree. Exactly. Uh, let's see. But we figured out who he was pretty quickly. The investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found a lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. I feel like that's the thing I'm supposed to get, but... <laughs> that was a Golden Age of Cartoon Network. Yeah. The bag he gave you? Yeah, but that wasn't missing from the crime scene. They said they found it on him, right? Victim got this from doctor before going to Trespian. Uh... Is there something in the photo that's, like, not in evidence? I don't think so. Because I originally, like, he said, we took everything from the crime scene, and I was like, what about this? You know? the His doodle, right? The bag is empty. Really? Would they count that, though? Because we already talked about the pills not being there. Oh, really? They're going to count the pills? Okay. All right. See, what happened... <laughs> Last time, last trial, I was overthinking it, so now I was like, all right, let's be more simple about it. There has to be a singular item missing. It's like, no, the pill's inside the bag. <laughs> like, oh, here we go with this shit again. All right. Detective Gumshoe, I think I would point something out to you. There's just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally. I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will you? Why are you a fucking masochist? You, test, you, you testify that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However... The prescription bed you mentioned was empty. Did the office did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? No, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trace Bien. Where then did the medicine disappear to? You You're too cold, pal! Oh. Sounds dumb but it makes sense. It does make sense, but it's just It does make sense. You know what? I'm not gonna fault the game for it. But it's just one of those things where, like, again, fucking, you look at it. Oh, wow. Actually, this time, they, they do state that the bag is empty. I thought it was another fucking, uh, medium key shit that they did in the second game, where it's like, King, the key has a green jewel in it, but we're not gonna tell you that. You just, you just gotta, you know, work it out yourself. <laughs> Indeed. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in, in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? Imagine presenting your dead mentor. <laughs> oh, shit. The victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescriptions could have been the lethal poison itself. Order, order. Well, Mr. Gadot. What do you have to say to that? Huh. That's all? What? Read for the court the name of- the, Read for the court the name of the clients on the prescription bag, if you will. Oh, clients? My bad. I say client? My bad. Clinic. <laughs> What's the clinic name got to do with anything? New ear- Oh, oh, oh god. Other letter dentologist, whatever. Ear doctor, I guess. I don't know. Clinic. 
is what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Gadot? Hardly an illness, Your Honor. What is it, like an ear infection? More like a bitter, a bitter war wound, you would say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Glenn found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. Oh, his eardrum. And what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside the ear canal, not to be ingested. Don't worry, it happens. <laughs> the dude fights. <laughs> the fucking computer programmer <laughs> works at blue screens. He's like, I mean, I believe it. Look at him. Right? He looks like Fikes. He got like a tree trunk neck. <laughs> You can throw like a couple of hands, maybe not good ones, but you know. It mentions an autopsy report if you read the fine print. Nerds fight now. <laughs> Nerds fight now. I see everything. They found traces of the medicine in the, in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. It seems Mr. Fuck his last name. God damn it, Elg. Whatever. Mr. Elg correctly applied some of the medis medication while he was in Trispian. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would have eaten this medicine. Hmm. It seems that this medication is relevant to the case after all. No. Nick? If you don't think of something quickly, it'll be over soon. She's right. But I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? Push the medication. See, you can say his name. Is it Ilg? Is that what it's supposed to be? His fucking name got me saying ill. Ill ass name. <laughs> no. Fucking, I, I don't know what his name is. I don't care. One moment ago, Mr. Gadot made the following statement. It seems Glenn fucking correctly applied some of his medication while it was Trespian. In that case, then why would the medication not found at the scene of the crime? Hmm? But the medication in question was for tropical use inside the ear canal. <laughs> tropical use. Yeah, that's right. I what I said. I said it on purpose. <laughs> Is it how we rank dot? Go dot. <laughs> uh, let's see. That doesn't change the fact that it could have. Ah, fuck. Listen, I have my excuses. I've been doing this for six hours. <laughs> Doesn't change the fact that this could not be found at the crime scene. However, insufficient it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. No, write a good dot. Shut up. Shut up, you guys making fun of me. <laughs> you know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. I hardly, it hardly seems likely that the prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. Objection. Yes, I do. <laughs> it hardly seems like that the coffee... Wow. Well, it hardly seems likely that the coffee that the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Mm. That's enough. Mr. Gadot? Is the detective the only witness that that prosecution wishes to call? Mr. Gadot? Um, I, uh, I got my own witness I like to call, sir. It's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo, the pigeon hater? Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems a little more than trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. And that is something that bothers me. Yeah, good job, Nick. <laughs> God. After all, he is God. <laughs> he says, what? Uh, the court will adjourn for a 10-minute recess. My voice needs a fucking 10-minute recess. After which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess. He's now a toaster. What the fuck are you guys going on about? Phew, that was close. Tell me about it. Nearly died in there. 
That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. I think I really did die out a little bit. Looks like we nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he helped me. But he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. Just make it way. What? Blasphemy. Hey, wait, are you guys talking spoilers about Godot in there? <laughs> blasphemy. I say blasphemy. Alright. <clears throat> Keep getting distracted by the fucking chat here. We're not making any progress. I don't think he I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was back to a corner. I mean the guy's gotta do his job, right? It's okay. I know all about lies and betrayal. I had them my whole life. Oh, you're, you're sad. You're sad. But it really hurts this time. Felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be the old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's going to be real stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? <laughs> Just have to imagine in my head, Kadan's making toast. Oh, God. Yeah, he's a big old grouch. And you're gonna be able to handle him? You're gonna be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seeds. January 7th, 11, 15 a.m. District Courtroom, number four. Kudo's gonna lick his lips if he sees Maggie. Oh... Nah, he's not gonna lip his lip. He's gonna lip his lips? He's not gonna lick his lips, he's gonna lick his nose. He's gonna be like, hmm. Start polishing it. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Godot, your next witness, please. Prosecution calls the lucky old timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? <laughs> nose tastes like shit. Name an occupation if you don't. The name is Victor Kudo, born, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty of what makes me, mind you, I can't, mind you, I can't be quite emotional at times, too. You don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo, just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? <laughs> listen, youngin. How much you call, how much call, did, wait, what? How much call did you think there, whoa, hold up, my brain. How much call did you think there is for Kimono? Or Kimono? Fucking Kimono embroidery here. God, fucking words, man. I've read horny and duty. <laughs> what the fuck? Kim oh God. For some reason, I can't say the word fucking Kim. Oh God, Kimono. I can't. For some reason, my my mouth wants to say fucking Kimino. God, Kimono embroidery. That's what I do, or did, back in Japan. I embroidered family crests and kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before the country ever existed. Wow. Real craftsmen. They're dying breed. At least you can say it. Oh god. Hey, maybe you could embroider my costume sometimes. Anyways, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So, I had to take a job working the cash register at a burger joint, pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Oh god. I don't think so. What if his nose explodes? Ugh. Why'd I give myself that image? Now then, witness. Were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh yes. I was eating some seeds over a cup of... Fuck that fucking word. Coffee. Whatever. Seeds. What do you think these are, hmm? I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps? Did I? Oh yes, oh yes I did. I saw it all. Then please, tell the court. We're all ears. Sure, sure. I'll tell you, I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. Seem to have a lot of problems with words. I started having a lot of pro- Alright. I talked about- I'm pretty sure I talked about this multiple fucking streams. I have a problem where I can read the words quickly, like my eyes see them and know what they are, but my mouth doesn't fucking say them 
like as fast as I can read them in my head. Right? Now you take that mixed with mixed with fucking English being English and fucking having most words you announce them phon- announce them. You pronounce them phonetically, right? And then once you fucking start seeing words that you're not supposed to pronounce that way, you go, wait, what? <laughs> also, we've been doing this for six hours now, right? Compare this performance to the beginning of the stream. We were flowing by like it was no problem. Then read slower? No, I refuse to. Fuck you. <laughs> like, what do you want me to read? Like, fucking... Like, I'm pretty sure we've all been in school where, like, the teacher's like, All right, time to read. And then everyone... And then no one raises their hand because everybody reads at, like, a fucking second grade reading level in high school. Right? You want me to sit here and be like, The man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a java chino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in trouble pain, and then collapsed. <laughs> trouble pain? <laughs> Terrible pain. Right? And then it's my fuck up. I'll fuck up. There you go. Right? I'd rather have it, you know, flow. That's the serving girl, right? They're, they're in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. At least you can understand it, yeah. There's also the problem where, like, since I, since I read, since I can see the words faster than I can say them, my brain will autocorrect words and just, like, I'll just say them for no reason. So, like, a sentence might say, a sentence might say, oh, it was a very sunny day and it was warm outside. But I'll read that, my eyes will see it fast enough, but as I'm speaking, I would say something like, oh, the sun was out that day, and it was hot outside. Right? Yeah, brain autocorrect, pretty much. It, like, autofills things. So, just a, just a bunch of stupid shit. <laughs> Mr. Kudo, she's not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. <laughs> you're bad at the rest- you're bad at the rest of them. All these new f newfangled words. What's wrong with old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled. All this talk of radios and glasses, it's wireless and spectacles, I tell ya. Excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. <laughs> Need to turn that shit off. It never works. Of course it never works, but I can't turn it off. Been doing it for years. Been doing it for years, and it's got me ahead of the game. Would you believe that my highest... Like... It, it's one, it's one of those things where, uh, like, how do I explain it? Fuck him. It doesn't seem, <laughs> it doesn't seem like, fuck, what's the word I'm looking for here? How do I explain it? All right. So it's one of those things where like, you see the person that you know is smart, but they're just constantly tripping over them fucking selves. Right. Kind of like that. Because, believe it or not, I was one of the smartest people in my school. Passed my state test with high 90s. And that's, and that's with me barely going to school as is. Because I stayed home for most of the time. I'm mostly self-taught. By self-taught, I don't mean homeschool. I mean self-taught. <laughs> well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Is it the Texas speech section? That young man was reading the sports paper. Alright. Let's see, what are we doing here? Hmm. Then servant girl brought up some Javachino, but put something in it. The man took one sip, in terrible pain, and he collapsed. Servant girl right there at the finished chair. I remember her well. Okay, you remember you remember her well. You said, I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you can identify by her? Uh, particular features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. 
Sorry? You can see all the way up to her... You know... She's practically naked in that uniform. So, the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit. But anyone could wear such a uniform, even me. Mr. Wright, please spare the courtroom any further mental anguish from the image. <laughs> oh shit. Don't get all excited, Nick. You gotta keep yourself together. I guess I got a bit carried away. There are other things I recognize about her, too. Seems pretty sure for himself. Alright, press harder. <laughs> Leave it at that. Understand mouthy words are hard sometimes, yeah. Mouthy word noises. Sure, you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether the waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, these are the features that were, that you recognize about the defendant. I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure, sure. No problem. There was a ribbon in her hair and an apron. her apron straps were loose. Loose. Tell me more about that. You do seem rather... rather... Uh, you seem remembering several details about her appearance. But what about the most crucial detail of all, her face? As if I wouldn't remember that. The witness noticed the straps on the accused aprons. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right. I can even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get a feeling there's something more to this somehow. Hmm. Acts about her back. Her back? You're saying the phony dressed in the maid's outfit? What? No, we're ta- Wait, what? what? What are you talking about? We're talking about Maggie Bird. Oh. No, we're, um... We're trying to... Basically, he's saying that he... He's recalling his testimony at what happened there. And he's saying that, um, he's like, I know it was her, because I remember her. I remember everything about it. And you're like, do you remember her, or do you remember her clothing? Because he doesn't actually know what Maggie looks like. He just, you know, been staring her up and down like the dirty pervy is. Uh, I don't want to leave it. I don't want to ask about straps. What would the straps help me with? Let's ask about the straps, then. Mr. Kudo, you seem especially interested in the straps. Why is that? What? The ribbon in her hair, the straps on her apron. What's the fascination? F -f fascination People have all kinds of fetishes, right? Damn, just calling them out like that. Okay. We don't need to embarrass the witness. Listen, young up... <laughs> Look at all young upstarts. I have some kind of sick strap fetish. Hmm. Is there any relevance to the witness unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? I was just curious. You were so fixated on the waitress's straps. I said I haven't got a strap fetish. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Very well. Continue with your testimony, Mr. Kudo. And make it strapless. Hmm. Alright. I guess we'll have to ask about her... Hmm. Her back, then? Gadot spitting facts. True enemy. He's true gentleman. Alright. Thanks about her back. The identified features you describe are all things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitresses from the front? Objection. Huh. He's got you there, Gramps. People normally talk about facial features when they ask to describe someone. 
but this wit this witness testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment. I'm telling you I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons. I'm just telling you what I saw. Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observed from the front, that is, to your testimony. Sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. And if I can't find a hole in it soon, it'll be it'll get even longer, I bet. Alright. Was there anything that caught my eye that caught my interest about her when I saw her from the front? Not the fact that she wears glasses? You didn't find anything to be distinct? Um uh, but you did clearly see the witch's face, yes? No question about it. I didn't come this far to back down now. Victor Kudo never backs down. That's not the answer I was looking for, but okay. Huh. It's starting to turn to a matter of pride for old CD now, I guess. I wonder if he really did see Maggie's face or not. Like I thought, we need some concrete proof of this. Proof that the old guy didn't see the waitress clearly from the front. Don't we have the floor plans for where he was sitting? I also like how he calls out the waitress to... <laughs> to about bullshit. Exactly. Let me check this. We have, uh... Crime photo... Or plan... Hmm. Was anything that caught my interest about her when I saw her from the front? Not... Let me just do this. Do that real quick. Alright. Present! Okay. Thought I can just, like, you know, show her profile off. How do I... How long do I plan to go on? Uh... I started, like, super early, just so I can have, like, an extra long part. But probably, like, another hour, maybe 30 minutes. Hmm. Let's see, caught my interest from the front. There's a ribbon in her hair. Maybe straps. Alright, so what was Maya and fucking Phoenix whispering about? Let's see. Hey, did I just hear something clever? So it really was Maggie. Huh. Could be the other girl we ran into. And took one sip. Terrible plan. Remember her well. Yeah. Think I can finish this trial if I go for an hour? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. At the rate I'm going, because... Because I'm not going to lie, for a good moment there, just kept getting distracted by the chat. Not going to lie. Uh, let's see. Young man was reading the sports paper. So, you saw the victim then. You saw Mr. Glenn. I want to know. If Gustin Brawl retained it, Gustin, Gustin Brawl, Brawl, Braun retained his championship or not? So he was looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? At the location in question, there's partitions between tables in the same side of the restaurant, right? So what if there are? If you say that you could see the victim, that means you were sitting at the table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? I got that... I got that place to drink Javachino. I don't go to... I don't go to sit. I don't remember which table I was sitting at. You mean you go there to eye the waitress? Okay. So now that I got that cleared up and I know where he was sitting... Guess I can... Guess I can use the floor plan now? Right? Hmm. That's the kitchen. Me? 
Maybe not. Maybe I gotta get more information out of him. Eh, why not? Yeah, I highly doubt that'll work. Was there anything that caught interest from the front? Well, he's not really lying about that, it's just more information. There's the defendant chair, really well. The man took one sip. Oh my god, he was terrible, pain and collapsed. He took just one sip? You youngins, you waste everything. Those cappuccinos cost eight dollars. In the good old days, we would drink every last drop, eat in the cup, and then die. What? Congratulations, you have earned the title of baddiest man to grace our courtroom. So, it was immediate death? Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh yes, he slumped over without such a twitch. I felt the Jalachino had just drank, uh, he just drank turned sour in his stomach. Oh, what the fuck? Read that completely wrong. <laughs> Won't backseat, but just say if you need help. Yeah, I know. And the waitress, I presume she is. So we go there. Oh. Wow. Completely even completely forgot. Just skip my mind. Just skip my mind completely. Mr. Kudo, I'd like you to please take a look at this. The filthy thing would, <laughs> filthy thing would suit Phil like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. Do you think I forgot something as dirty as that? Well, you half-witted clot. What? What is it? Ever since I said you half-witted clot, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron. It's the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means, if you had really seen the apron before... Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. Oopsie. Witness. You can't just oops your way out of this. Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, Trite. Here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one witness in the restaurant. Witness? Waitress. My bad. <laughs> that, be that being the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird. Exactly. When that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup, the old guy was watching. Hmm? I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you say. What you say you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My nug is perfect work in order. Can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what a what a burger a, wait what? What a burger a customer wanted. What what a burger? I'm adding words in there again. Can't remember? Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Very well. Let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. Gonna call it out, Captain, from now on. Alright. He was another one of those pesky youngin' types. Wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the, no and the noisy brat kept rustling the pages. The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. Then the servant girl in question brought over the Javachino. The little frig- Little fi- uh, the little fidget picked up the cup. Wait, little fidget? What? Little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand, took a sip. That's a way to describe someone. The test one we had just heard was the test of how credible the witness memory is. 
It seems that it seems to me that he remembers the victim in great detail. Oh yes, I hate those you know, you know what types. What? <laughs> hate those you know what types who are vague about everything. How are you gonna handle this, Nick? We only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up. You mean, isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose it's what I do best. Gotta fuck him up. It's what I do best. Just hop over the table and start beating him. All right. Broken pair of spectacles. It wasn't broken pair, I think. Spectacles. Dark glasses to you. One of the lenses were green. The other was broken. Newfangled rubbish. That's why I remember him so well. He did have some kind of lens over his left eye. But I wouldn't have called it a pair of glasses. He seems to have been wearing some rather modern looking shades. Perhaps I should take to wear it's <laughs> perhaps I should take to wearing some and rival Mr. Godot's shards appearance. You better come up with something quick. Guess I wait and see if I could challenge him about the spectacles. I will wait and see about that. The newspapers was a sports paper, was it? Young hooligan, I nearly asked him, can you even read without fidgeting, hmm? How was I supposed to be able to read the back page while, with all the wrestling going around? Wrestling? Rustling? Uh, I need to find out if this... God, how many people are gonna fucking say that shit? It was his paper, not yours. If you want to know bad, why didn't you buy one of your own? Well, <laughs> what are you looking at me for? Ow. Fucking throwing seats at me. You got beaten yesterday. God damn, everybody keeps saying it. Who is this guy? Alright. That man was listening to the wireless. The wireless? Huh. Sorry. Sorry, I was checking something. My bad. Alright. The decadent young rascal. The decadent young rascal. What the fuck? My day was one or the other. Read the paper or listen to the wireless. Oh boy. Are you using an earpiece? Selfish. <laughs> what was it? What was with that? I was straining my ears, but I couldn't catch any of it. So desperate to listen to the radio. What are you looking at me like that for? How dare you feel sorry for me? And the server girl in question brought over the Java Chino. I'll fucking press it, why not? You mean the waitress, who you only saw from behind, right? You're one of those, are you? You never let anything go, isn't that right? Maybe. What well, does it matter if I saw her from the front or the behind? God. Better not push it until I got some hard evidence. Well, I don't have any hard evidence right now. His free hand? Yes. Which hand was that? Weren't you listening before? Clo clothe the ears? I said he was rustling the newspaper in his right hand, didn't I? God. Just keep getting hit with seeds. Perhaps the great Mr. Trying has three hands. <laughs> I got three legs. Yeesh. Well, they ask it. I need to gang up on me and treat me like a freak. The whole point of this cross-examination is to establish just one thing. That this old guy's memory has holes in it. Not a contradiction. It's testimony somewhere, right? Yeah, I just wanted more information. Okay. Uh, one of those pesky with spectacles. Newspaper in his right hand. It was a brat. Let me see a picture of it. Check out that picture. Really doesn't tell me much. <laughs> really doesn't really doesn't tell me much there. Coffee contains potassium, has Maggie's fingerprints. Mm. Left by the victim. Doodling. Alright. Would that show that he's left-handed? If it's on that edge of the paper? It would show that he's left-handed. 
right? Newspaper in his right hand and noisy brat kept rustling the pages. Eh, what do I got to lose? Nope. That's not it. Hmm. Oops, didn't mean to press that. My bad. Wrong button. Alright. Let me see. Left eardrum, rapture from the day. Okay. Trying to catch on technicality or some shit. Listening to the wireless, remember that well. Some girl question brought over the job of Chino. Picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. With his free hand. fucking with his free hand so his left hand he said he was flipping through the pages with his right photo even fucking help in that case what about the profiles hmm. I'll try the photo yeah I didn't expect anything from that brought over the cup. That won't work either. Okay. Hmm. Listen to the wireless, rim that well. Superfist says, oh, good plant. Newspaper in his hand. Is there anything else that would contradict the hand thing? What is free hand? Mm. I don't. Oh. one I'm presenting at? What the fuck? Wait, what? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> he said, am I drunk? <laughs> yeah, the one you're presenting at. <laughs> turn into fucking... Turn into, uh... What's it called? Jar Jar Banks? Hmm. No, I'm...
No, I'm just confused as fuck. I'm just lost. My brain's fried at this moment, not gonna lie. <laughs> Memory just came back. <laughs> Thanks, streamer. <laughs> but, uh, fuck. A little friend just picked up the cup with his free hand, took a sip. Picked up the cup with his free hand. Honestly, I don't know. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. Now... While I was staring at that cup... I really hope Phoenix doesn't say something like, That cup is a left-handed cup, or some stupid shit like that. I really hope. I really hope that's not what the case is here. Because... You can just turn a cup around and pick it up. By any side whatsoever. I really hope Phoenix doesn't say this shit. Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you told at the start of the testimony? That this was a way of testing the credibility of your memory. I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with my memory, I'm telling you. If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. Care to tell us where this is going, Trite? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand while drinking the coffee with his free hand, which would make it his left. Okay. What is that? Kindergarten? But, like with court, please take a look at this. This cup the victim used, correct? Yes. On the rim, you notice the mark left by the, the mark left by the victim. She, oh. Yeah. Okay, no. Honestly, I didn't care about the stain. Alright, that makes more sense. That makes more sense, because he's talking about, like, where the stain is located and stuff like that. That's cool. I thought he was going to be like, thought he was going to be like, fucking, this cup is only a cup made for people who use their right hands. As the picture, as the fu fucking picture shows. Meanwhile, you can just turn a cup around at any moment, right? Yes, there's a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where the stain is, you clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you eat the seeds and sing the pigeon song. Sounds like an Edgeworth thing. Nah. I'll take the L on that one, you know? That one was my fault because I just wasn't paying attention to the stain at all. Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this simply is not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where- What? If you think you're gonna- You think I'm gonna stand here and let you tell me I'm mad, you're wrong. I don't care about the dirty cup of coffee. I know what I saw. You still insist on your testimony? That young brat was holding a cup in his left hand. Oh yeah, no question. I'm good. Law-abiding citizen I am. Is that dead young hood, hood hotbot? What? Dead young hotbot? And you, you spiky haired. Hotbot? <laughs> I'm still confused on that. Who, me? Thank you, old man. I've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I gotta say. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but sure, why not hear him a little more? Mr. Godot. He's calling Godot a hot bot, more importantly, dead. Like, that's why I was confused. I was like, dead. <laughs> but this is my 16 cup of coffee, so this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor. You guys are jackasses. The boy was wearing the air piece on the same side as his green lens as a spec. What? Same side as the green lens on a spec. Okay. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it before he picked up the cup, too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand. He did say he come from hell. Exactly. I am dead. A little bit of Final Fantasy X in there, if you know what I mean. We know that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It, was, it wasn't a monocle, Your Honor. It was a scouter. 
Small computer monitor, you often used by programmers. What fucking programmers use that shit? Where are they? Where can I get one? A monitor, you mean? Like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called a HMD. It's a common tool in a, in a victim's line of work. HDTV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad. But they don't, they don't matter. I know what I saw, and I'm telling the truth. It's true, he doesn't seem to be lying. And those are the facts. I'm good old black and white. Good old black and white. Fuck me. Alright. <clears throat> Boy was wearing the air piece on the same side as the green lens. Okay. So, the victim was wearing an HMD. HD TV CD, what does it matter? Okay. He sure was wearing the earpiece on the same side? No question. Could only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. Yeah, that's pretty obvious if you look at the floor plans. Okay. From the opposite table, you have the view, side of the victim's head. He kept fiddling with it all the time. What was he doing with it? It seems you kept an eye on Mr. Glenn. He was getting on my nerves. Rustling newspaper and fiddling with the earpiece all the time. And then he went and made all the fuss, dying on some sippage. <laughs> he made all the fuss for dying. What a pussy. I wanted to say to him, calm down, stop dying over there. Just looking at him made me suddenly speed speed up my speed up my CD then. I could have choked. So I take it the victim was a walking ball of nervous energy. God. He's fiddling with it. Before he picked up the cup of coffee. The earpiece you mentioned? Which hand did the victim touch it with? You're one of those people, aren't you? You're the type that uses your left hand to get things out of your right pocket. Or fasten your left cuff with your right hand. And when the tour guy says, on your right side, you see the fabulous blah blah. <laughs> You're the only one who looks liberally to the left. No, I didn't mean... Obviously, he used the hand the same side of his body that the earpiece was in. Ow. So, he had the AMD on the left side, then it was his left hand, I guess. Hmm. And then, he used the same hand to pick up the cup. You seem very sure of yourself, Mr. Kudo. That's because I know what I saw, no matter what tricks you try to play on me. It looks like he really did see the guy picking up the coffee with his left hand. <sighs> this is a dead end. Well, Nick, what do you think? I think the guy's telling the truth. But even so, something's not quite right. Ch then chuck evidence at him until he breaks. <laughs> but if he's not lying, there wouldn't be any contradictions in his testimony, right? Hmm. Well, since I got fucking... <laughs> the Virgin Glenn dying from drinking versus the Chad Kudo eating the entire cup. God. He's like, stop dying over there, bitch. Man up. Okay. Same side as green lens. Fidgeting with it all the time. Where he picked up the cup, too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the coffee. Maybe the medicine, maybe he was applying medicine to himself. Hmm. Same side, green lens. Kept fiddling with it all the time. I don't think I can get anything out of this, right? Wore an HDM over his left eye. Left eardrum was raptured. Okay.
Use the same hand to pick up the coffee. Hmm. That just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta review, I gotta press him again. I just gotta review what the fuck I even read, because I just read it to Reddit. I was just reading to read, not gonna lie. My brain is somewhere else right now. Alright. Hmm. No question. Set up his head from where you're sitting. Okay. Floor plans. So he had a view of the left side. Kept fiddling with it all the time. Seems you kept an eye on him. Cool. Nothing there for me. Just before you picked up the cup, too. Airpiece you mentioned. Which hand did the victim touch it with? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. If you had the HMD on his left side, then it was his left hand that he picked up the coffee with. So, and then he used the same hand to pick up the, pick up the coffee, his left. What? With his left? Taken from near the kitchen. If it was from near the kitchen... Wait, what? If he said he picked him up with the... Alright. What's really bothering me here... Is that... He said he's sitting across from him. He's watching him do shit with his left hand. Right? But in the photo... That doesn't... That wouldn't correlate... Because if he was sitting beside him, and he was doing everything with his left hand... Hmm. That won't be a contradiction. No, I'm just saying, like, maybe he saw it from a different angle. He's fidgeting with it just before he picked up the cup. Not sure what the relevance to this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there's something very strange about your observation of the victim. What? Yeah, he said he was wearing the earpiece on the same side. No question. Oh, I was thinking it from a different perspective. Oh, God. In my mind, I'm thinking of him, like, applying the medicine, not the fact that he can't do shit with his left ear because it's fucking ruptured. No question. You can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. I can only see the side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. Are we overthinking it again? Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you say that? 
No doubt unaware of the fact, Mr. Kudo. But the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrums was ruptured. Eh? The trace of medication for his condi trace? Traces of medication for his conditions were found in his ear canal. My throat is like killing me. That's right. It's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear. Because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Brings out the big brain in all of us? <laughs> is that true, Captain? It is. <laughs> Pretty pigeons. <laughs> He's singing the pigeon song, eating seeds. He did it. Man of his word. Order. The witness testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind. And he claims the victim was wearing his earpiece when he knows his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot? Mm. A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. What? Captain, you calling me a drip? You saying I'm the you say I'm dripping? I'm drip? We drippy? This is the victim's coffee cup in which potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I never back down, I know I'm right. The lad drank the Javachino with his left. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly, the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup, held in his right, and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Nope, he died from one sip. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Which hand, which hand the victim used is pick, eh. Which hand the victim used to pick up this cup is relevant, Your Honor. The fact still stands. With one hand or the other, Mr. Glenn drank the poisoned coffee. Like this. <laughs> like this. Just throwing back coffee. I want to be called Drip by Godot. <laughs> Sadly, Mr. Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory is credible. And the results are clear. The testimony given by the witness is useless. My brain is fried. I believe it's time to conclude today's proceedings. I'm satisfied that the witness is not, deceive is not deceiving the court. But to be frank, his testimony is farce. Did he have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old man. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo. You can't reach me from there. <laughs> I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate the case further. That's all for now. This court is adjourned. Who? What? Why? Oh, God damn it. If we stop now, where does this leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo. Thanks to that blue suit young upstart over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's or cross his eyes now. How's, how's your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo. But there's nothing I can do. I've kept my mouth shut until now. But there's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might, be, it might not be anything. But I want another chance. I want another crack at you, you young shark. Me? He's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, what do you say to one fi final showdown? The final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook. Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17 cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I give you all the Javachino you want if you come to my house after the trial. I may be 68 years old, but Victor Kudo's still a man. That's enough, witness. I believe it'll be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. You better get ready, youngster. I get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me. He's gotta use some sort of infinite ammo code with the box of seeds. Damn. Alright. see what we got. First of all, I want to stress that this might not be nothing. Not too sure of it myself. The young man slumped over the table as soon as he took a sip of the Javachino. This guy's Larry from the future. <laughs> Shit. 
Uh, well, the clumsy idiot of, of uh, the, 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 the clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. It broke, and the strip of, and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. You're doubting me again. You're doubting a poor, defenseless old man. No, we're not doubting you. <laughs> this guy's a moron. Mr. Gouda. Do I get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah? So what? Probably. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. You're a bird brain. That's why you all can... That's why you all... Eh. Fuck. It's calling me bird brain fucking... My brain is being turned to mush right now. Final cross-examination. Alright. I don't even remember what he fucking said, I'll be honest. First of all, I want to stress that it might be nothing. Okay. Slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip. The clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. It broke and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? What? What the hell am I even looking for in this thing? What am I, lo what am I looking for? Just a random contradiction? Death, what's between there? This testimony makes you mad. <laughs> what? A deadly powdery poison. Fingerprints found in her pocket. Coffee contained potassium cyanide. Curve the victim. Nice fingerprints. Broke the vase covering the table, got completely soaked. Oh, okay. See, in my mind, I was like, if the table got completely soaked, then why is the lottery ticket fine? Hmm. <laughs> so dense that light bends around him. I don't even. Th Wait, what? <laughs> Young boy sloped over the table as soon as he took one sip. Clumsy idiot set the vase, knocked it right over. Fuck it, I got time. Yeah, he slumped over us since he took one sip. Court has already heard that testimony. I know that. Just set in the mood. Alright. Yes. Please continue, Mr. Kudo, quickly as possible. Alright. Knocked over the vase. What about it? Vase, you say? Yes. There's a vase on all the tables in the place. There's accidents written to ha- There's accidents waiting to happen, practically begging to be knocked over. Well, he's right about there being vases. I do remember seeing them too. There was a vase on the table when I ate lunch there. Have a moment. Okay. Well, hard to say, it's a bit unclear. How do you really define? Okay. Heard it break? Okay. Do I have a picture of the fucking thing? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Alright. Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Hmm? So what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there. Intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, Grandad? I'm no granddad of yours. <laughs> oh, shit. 
Enough. If you throw any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will- Oh, shit. What is it now? I just remember something. Yes. The broken vase. It was on my table. Get the fuck out. Get out of here. Go. Get. Go. I'm tired of your shit. Go. Goodbye. Well, you see. You startled me when the young lad collapsed. So I stood up. Must have been when it fell over. Based on my table, I mean. Based on your table. Yes. It was on my own table. That's how my groin... That's how my groin became... Wait, what? Okay. I'm pretty sure that's how your groin became so just in there staring at fucking maids the whole entire time. Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You certainly earned your kudo your kudos for today. I'd like to ask a question now. Have I uh have I been any use at all? No, not really. Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself. Wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I got more to say. Oh yes, I remember something else. Bailiff, squirt the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me. Notice me, senpai. Well, you seem to have been considerably sidetracked. I'll, I'll fucking say. And I'm still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defense has not been positively identified as the waitress in the question. Additionally, there are two disparity, uh, disparities, disparities in the testimony we have heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup, and the victim supposedly drank with his left hand, and the earpiece, which was inserted into the left ear, out of which he could not hear. Wow, Nick, you did it. Yeah, I did it. I'm dying on the inside. <laughs> Mr. Judge, I don't... <laughs> Start disappearing. <laughs> Mr. Judge, I don't feel so good. I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. There's one more thing before I call today's session to an end. One more thing, Your Honor. The witness we just heard from, he's most in uh, he is most insistent that his testimony should be used, so he summarized it accordingly in the statement. Okay. You may each have a copy of it if you wish. Oh no. <laughs> he said, remember Talia. Oh shit. Uh Whatever, the prosecution doesn't need props like that. Gnot's really mad, huh? Yep, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies, my own, yours, and Gnot's. Yes, Your Honor. When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. How the fuck do I pronounce that? Los Puros? Los Peros? Los Spios? Sorry, I'm not good at this type of stuff. <laughs> but thank you for the follow. I greatly appreciate it. Alright. Uh, I'm sorry. This isn't a piece of testimony. More like a five-year-old apology. Dolly needs to get out of jail. I need my good slash evil couple. You're spoiling shit? Is that what we're doing? You're spoiling shit? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I have a feeling that Dolly's gonna get out. I mean... She said, she literally shook her fist at me and said, I'll get my revenge someday. As she got dragged off to fucking jail. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? That is all. This court is adjourned. To be continued. Thank fucking God. <laughs> that is the perfect ending spot for tonight. My brain is mush. Right. Thought Phoenix and Dolly was great. I wish, man. Honestly, I wish, but, you know, she's evil. <laughs> if only she was a good guy. If only, if only Phoenix lucked out. <laughs> he said, and? She's evil, so what? What do you mean? She, fucking, she tried to kill Phoenix. 
she tried to kill Phoenix. She she fucking poisoned his medicine. Come on. Like, there's a level of crazy, right? But once the crazy is targeted at you, you go, wait, hold up a minute. Hold up now. <laughs> Can't do that. But I do like Dahlia, though. Not as much as I like Lada, though. Lada's cool. I can hang out with Lada. Dahlia, I feel like I gotta fucking... I gotta wear a tux and suit. Yeah? Wear a tux. Sit up straight. Hanging out with Lada Hart. You're just chilling out, having a good time. But anyways, that's going to be it for tonight. This is a great stopping point. I'm happy that I'm happy that I sat here and I did this longer stream, mainly because uh, I just wanted to make like make a good dent in fucking Phoenix Wright, so we're not here forever, just like what we're doing with Conception. Speaking about Conception, I believe that is the next. Uh, next time we stream, we're going to be playing more Conception Plus. So if you guys like anime and waifu, you can fucking hang out for that, I guess. If not, it's whatever. Uh, before I go, just a reminder. For those who, first of all, for those who watch live, thank you. For those watching the VODs, I thank you as well. Like, I gotta say, I really appreciate, like, I appreciate people watching live, but people who watch the VODs, I really appreciate that because that means that you think I'm entertaining enough to just sit there and go through my bullshit. That's pretty cool. I like that. But, um, Talia can poison me any day of the week. <laughs> Listen, I got, I got to at least have like 10 years with her max. Then she can kill me with the poison. It would be a good, good 10 years. Right. But, um, yeah. Uh, for those who aren't followed, please think about following. If you aren't sub, think about it. If not, that's cool. I really don't care. Uh, and for those who are on their web browsers, on their desktops, please go get the BTTV extension for Twitch so you can have access to more emotes and stuff like that in the future. Because I'm going to be using that for some of the emotes once, uh, once they get here. And that's it, right? Uh, I'm trying to be more active on Twitter, just like put in little tweets here and there. So if you care about that, you can do that. I really don't, I really don't care. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's it for me. I am tired and I'm going to pass out. Also, the Sly Cooper 2 playthrough is going to be uploaded later today. So that's all edited and finished. Just got to upload that. And probably if I have enough time, the the one stream we did of Uncharted, the first game where we just finished it in one stream, that's going to go up. If I have time today, I probably will. But um, that's it. So yeah, next stream, Conception, uh, all that other fancy stuff I just said. And nothing else really so once again i want to say thank you for everyone for watching and i will see you in the next video stay happy stay healthy and take care i'm a chef what else should i be please don't take off